Oh, I'm just here to have a good time. I just want to try to finish the game as much as I can while we're playing, so I think we'll make it kind. Sorry if anyone is expecting this to be hardcore, but I'm not. I don't really have the best kind of desk or anything. Like on here. Human? Well, good, because I'm an alien. Come on. There we go. Hi again, sunshine. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, me too, skeleton. <laughs> I know it's not gonna happen in this room, but it's gonna be a really good Sounds unbearable. You are a quitter than the game and couldn't hear you. You are a... Sorry, Skeletron, I don't quite understand. I'm gonna guess, though, that you guys can't hear me, so I'm gonna switch tap again real quick. Quieter than the game. Sorry, my voice. All right, I'll turn it down a little bit more. That that tracks. I don't have a loud voice. Tell me when it's good, because I wouldn't be able to tell. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a loud voice, and this game is not a quiet game. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, let me refocus my camera again then. Can you guys tell I'm excited by the sound of my voice? Got a big old bottle of water here so I don't get tired when I'm reading. <laughs> I wonder how many I'm going to go through by the end of this. Come on, camera. Of all things today, I don't want this to be what stops my stream. I need to get a desk lamp. I have a feeling it's lighting. So it's stopping my camera from being able to recognize my face easily in those days. Come on. Are you just skipping dialogue or playing around? Or playing normal? I'm gonna play it normally. I wanna see how far I can get into the game 
normally, I guess? Um... I imagine I won't be, like, speedrunning or anything. I'll probably take my time. Um... I really like the dialogue in this game, so I'd like to show it off and also, uh, do some... I want to hang out with characters that I haven't hung out with before. Because I usually go... When I play this game, I go for the same kind of few characters. I just mainly replay it for the story. But I would like to make some new friends today. I think that would be nice. I am NOT befriending the otaku, no matter what. But... I don't know. Might be nice to get to know some new people. Come on, camera. Junko best girl, I agree. Well, I mean, I do like Kyoko too, though. I think Fates Rick has decided that I'm just not a human. Well, I mean, it's true, but like, it hurts. I did my best to make my shell look human. Hey, we're keeping this- we're keeping things spoiler free, just in case, since I'm uploading this onto YouTube as well. There we- what? Really? You got- you recognize my face for that one moment, face right? Interesting. Interesting choice. I'll have to respect it. Keep it as spoiler-free as possible. Yes. I do want to upload this onto YouTube later. And I'm hoping to be beginner-friendly as well. Like, I've already uh, divulged... Although, I, you guys probably couldn't hear me then. But I divulged that I already know what's going to happen. There we go. Hi, beautiful. But, um... For the most part, I'm not going to talk about it. I might throw, you know, a cryptic hint in here and there for fun, but... I might also say something misleading for fun. Who knows? Alright. I guess we should get started. The massive high school towers over all the other uh, over all the other buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable. A government-funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you can do. No ordinary student can enroll here. The only way is the only way in is if you're scattered by the school itself. I'm standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students. It was me. Before we go any farther, I guess I should introduce myself. My name's Makoto Naegi. Uh Naegi Bryce, why'd you say it like that? As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do, but it's not like I'm a psychic or a mutant or whatever. Like, if you ask me what my favorite song was, or my favorite movie or TV show, it'd all just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. Even among the average, I'm completely average, so I can't say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, 
I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. My favorite case? Oh god, I'm horrible at remembering them by number. <laughs> um... I think my favorite is probably In Trigger Happy Havoc, my favorite case is probably the third one. But... I think that they all have their own charm, of course, but I liked the third one a good bit. Uh, oh, Skeletron, have you watched the anime? Just making sure. Yours as well? Yeah, it was just a really good one. It had my favorite execution, too. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still. Here I am. Standing in front of anything but ordinary Hope's Peak Academy. Uh, not the anime, but you played all three games. I do suggest checking out the uh, newer anime. They have some pretty good plot points. But playing all three games is already... You have a lot of knowledge already, so that's pretty good. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. It's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I'd feel that way. What you have to understand is... Well... Let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. Hope's Peak only invites those students who are truly elite in their field. Alright, come on, keep it coming. Apparently my friend kind of shows them. Alright. This year's Ultimate Pop Sensation is going to be there. Yeah, the Ultimate Baseball player is going to be there too. So jealous, it's only for winners. Something, 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 something. It's such a popular topic, there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So, to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. And all I saw was talk about ultimate students who are way above your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. There's also the ultimate baseball star. He's the cleanup hitter for the national high school champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. I prefer it when she was called ultimate Gyaru, but that's fine. Her ultimate model also works. Danganronpa 3, the prequel. Excuse me? Are you talking about the animes? Cause I guess I could count it that way. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every high school girl wants to be. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader, too. Scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love the guy. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, uh, the ultimate gambler. The ultimate swimming pro, the ultimate programmer, the ultimate clairvoyant, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. I felt like a tame little house cat who'd wandered into a pride of lions. Yeah, the anime is basically that. <laughs> I'm gonna go through the <laughs> Is that like what the title is? God, I only know it by hope and despair sides. But still, there was something I couldn't stop thinking about. You see, there were a few students who I couldn't find any info on, no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. Wait, what did I have? Oh, gosh. I don't remember how to look at the log. None of these buttons work yet because we're not at that part yet. Dang it. Oh well, I missed some text. That thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I, don't, no, I know I don't have much in the way of personality, but beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How does such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? 
I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you've been selected, and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. They spelled it out plain as day. I got invited by pure luck. Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. But after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. But then actually standing in front of the school... I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I feel myself losing my nerve. Okay, yeah, that's just the description. Yeah, that's a pretty accurate descriptor. But still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8 a.m. The meeting still isn't for a little while, but I should probably just head in. Yeah. Yeah, let's do this. I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. And I took my first step toward the main hall. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says it's 7, 10 a.m. The meeting doesn't start until 8 o'clock, so there's still a full 15 minutes left. Makes sense that nobody else would be here yet. I was so wound up, I got here way too early. I have plenty of time before the meeting, just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around the school. Maybe that'll help me calm down a little. I am a student here now, so there shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It'll help me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step in Hope Speaks Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. Ooh, brain blast! What the? But the instant I took the first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some sort of delusion, melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, and then spinning again. And the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began. And how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized. The reason I was brought to Hope Speak Academy wasn't because I had ultimate good luck. It was so that I could experience ultimate despair. Welcome to Despair! Prologue! Alright! Yeah, let's save that data. You can, already, you can see how far I played. <laughs> well, not how far I played, because I played the whole game, but like, you can see all my saves. Uh, Mr. T streaming. Hi and bye! Oops. I messed up. Do, do, do. Put my head down like a dummy. happened again just 
to record my face. I'm sorry, I don't look normal. <laughs> Honestly, feels weird that it keeps losing me so quickly. Come on, all I did was put my head down. All right, one second. Uh, if this is your bare minimum, Skeletron, I'd hate to see what your maximum is. <laughs> uh, these are pretty good puns, though. Oh, goodness. Come on. Show me. Alright, I'm gonna... Yeah, of course, and I give up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move forward. What? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. Pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but what was I doing here asleep just now? This isn't a classroom I've been in before. What the heck is going on? Oh, the decorating. Welcome to Hope's Peak Academy. Firstly, we'd like to explain the basic controls. You can use the mouse pad to adjust your aim. You can use the mouse to adjust your aim. If you aim at an object you can interact with, you can press the last mouse button. In Presto, you investigate the object. Use Waz to adjust your viewpoint. Or you can press and hold the right mouse button and move the mouse around. Why don't you try looking around the classroom? Boop, 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 boop. That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drill I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? An orientation guide? Some kind of cheap looking pamphlet and there's something handwritten on it. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, this school will be your entire world. The hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Jeez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then? Is that... a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in. I guess I have to keep... I guess I have these to keep weirdos from just wandering in. Oop. What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window should be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. And if I were to knock on it... Yep, definitely metal. Thick, too. Very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is, I got myself so wound up I passed out in the main hall, and then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean this is a classroom inside Hope's Peak. But then if that's true, that just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows, like a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time, there might be other students there now. You can leave the classroom by pressing the R key. Alright. There's a TV. The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. That is everything. Uh, R. Leave the area? Yes, please. You could get grizzlier? I'm not sure what the pun there is, Skeletron. <laughs> Jeez, this hallway's kind of weird, too. This is getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well,. For now, I'll just head to the main hall. Use Waz to move. Hold down the shift key while moving to run. Also, you can press the tab key to bring up the map. Press it again to close the map. How convenient! 
How convenient indeed. I run so fast. Ugh, watch out, Nike's got the zoomies. <laughs> I wonder where this red door leads. I'm starting to feel sick standing here. The AV room, locked. store. I guess it's not open. The nurse's office. Off limits, looks like. Really functioning school. Yep, there's the gym. Don't want to go in just yet. I like checking all the stuff. Girls' bathroom. Not that it matters, but it's locked. The boys' bathroom. Good thing I don't have to go. Before I go to the gym. Ah, oh, never. Yeah, main hall. I forgot the meeting happens in the main hall and then the gym. Alright, by the time I got to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Whoa, hey! Another new kid? Huh? Then you guys are all... Yeah, we're all new here. Today's supposed to be our first day of class. So, counting him, that makes 15. Seems like a good cutoff point, but I wonder if this is everyone. There is a lot of dialogue. I don't know if I should keep reading these on stream. <laughs> Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been handpicked by the school. I looked around at everyone who'd gathered there, taking their faces taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming from each of them. Oh, I love how things set up. Uh, how's it going? My name's Makoto Nagi. Sorry I'm late. A bunch of stuff happened, and then all of a sudden I was just asleep. Huh? Whoa, you too? Hmm. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm -hmm. So strange. I declare beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. Um, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Got it. Just a moment. There's something else we must address. Listen to me. Makoto, your tardiness is unacceptable. Surely you are aware the meeting was to start at 8 a.m. sharp. To be late on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you and you must accept your due punishment. What? What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. That's right! Everyone, just calm down. Listen, why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Uh. The hell? No time for friggin' introductions. <laughs> Maybe, but it may be good to at least find out who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other if we do not know each other's names? Yeah. That's a good point. Okay, so let's get introductions out of the way, then we can move on to whatever else. Sound good? Man, I don't know how varied my <laughs> voice acting actually was just now, but I tried. I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So I guess this is as good a chance I'm as I'm gonna get. I already looked everyone up on the Hope's Peak Academy thread online, but I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to those five over there. Aim at a student and press the left mouse button to shoot, I mean talk to them. Each conversation is important to the overall story, so keep track of how they go. Right, right. We'll do left to right. <laughs> I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in bold simplicity. Let's work together on our educational crusade. I love you. <laughs> So that's Kiyotaka. According to what I saw about him on that thread, he went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with the community's public morals committee. committee. They say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of Ultimate Moral Compass. I preferred the Ultimate Hall Monitor translation. <laughs> anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Naigi, right? That's a good name, a strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. You hear me? 
And to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it, right? Right! This guy is... kind of annoying. Ultimate writing prodigy, Toko Fukawa. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men pole. Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes and all her books are instant bestsellers. Which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. But also do call such a young and talented author. But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type, but with her masterpiece being romance and all. What's your problem? What? <laughs> Not polite to stare, you know? Stop staring at me like I'm some filthy creature! Filthy creature? No, I just thought... <laughs> I know what you just thought. You just thought you'd never seen such an ugly woman. You just thought it was so funny. No, that's not what I was thinking at all. I'm Don't bother trying to lie to me! I know it's true. Otherwise, you... I know you can't stand looking at me. Anyway. Whatever. I don't really care. I'm used to it. Wow, talk about an inferiority complex. I was way off about what a successful author would be like. Oh no, are my puns too bad? Got to suck the peak. Yeah, it has to suck to peak at 10. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she did only two years ago, which she was definitely not 10 two years ago. She did write a best-selling book. So I think, I think she's still got some good flow going. That said, she's only known for like two works, so maybe write a little faster, Coco. Hi, I'm Saya from Arizona. I look forward to getting to know you. Ultimate pop sensation, Sayaka Maizono. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing, and that pleasant sense I can't quite place. Sayaka Maizono. When I saw her name in that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all over the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to the school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. Huh? Did you hear me? I'm psychic. Huh? <laughs> Kidding. I just have really good intuition. She's a sharp one. Hey, um... Huh? Hey, by any chance... Now what? Huh? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto, did... Just hold on. Jeez, you guys, how long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Uh, um, sorry, just got carried away, I guess. You hear me? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling to a bunch of idle chit-chat. Um, you're right. Sorry. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. Kind of like Sayaka really has something she wanted to say. It's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Said her best book and she keeps writing, but the one author who wrote To Kill a Mockingbird only wrote one book. Yeah, that's true, but like, I don't know the name of the person who wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. So to be a successful writer must be low. Uh, you mean like quality, not quantity. That's fair, I guess. But wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of both quality and quantity. I mean, James Patterson could do it. Rick Riordan could do it. And they're both, I'd say, madly successful. I mean, Shakespeare wrote a lot. Yo, the name's Leon Kawada. What's up? <laughs> I'm worried all my guy voices are gonna sound the same. I recognize that name. He played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter. The ultimate baseball star. And that superb athletic specimen is... You? Seriously? Well, what's wrong? N nothing I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all. What, were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? Well, <laughs> yeah. You know, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty-looking traditional baseball player type. 
I mean, when I found that article and picture of you online, that's how you look then. <laughs> what? Oh man, you found the picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. This is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head is like, like that is part of the national championship regulations. But now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Hey, Actually, can I be totally honest with you? you no. Know. I don't like baseball, like at all. I've never gone to a single practice. He's never practiced, and he was still his team star player. He's some kind of prodigy. Yeah. And as soon as I get accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? <laughs> my only path in life is getting into music. You can feel that star quality or I have, right? You know what I mean. I'm gonna be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar, and we're set. How cool is that? This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like super cool to the max. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball all-star. Stephen King. Yeah, he he wrote a lot too, didn't he? I am Hifumi Yamada. Ugh. But if you wanna call me by my nickname. The Alpha and the Omega! I don't mind. <laughs> I do like what he does with his voice. It's fun. Ultimate fanfic creator, Hifumi Yamato. <clears throat> By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? World of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. <laughs> Dojo author. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is pretty remarkable. However... The words of such idiots mean nothing to me. I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I am a soldier, serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fan fiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nike, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. Mm -hmm. For my work is filled with deepest meaning. What, what kind of meaning? Yes, indeed. It's about embracing our base disturges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. Okay, now to talk to those five people over there. Hey, ya! I'm Aoi Asahina. But my friends just call me Hina. What's up? Ultimate Swimming Pro, Aoi Asahina. Baby! Aoi Asahina, she's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since elementary school. She's even been chosen as an upcoming Olympic cadet. She is, without a doubt, the Ultimate Swimming Pro. The combination of her ability, appearance, and, um, proportions has been widely discussed online. So, uh, what's your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Nagi. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. It is that. Got it. Sure, sure, got it. Here, I'll have it in my brain right now. Yeah. Makoto Nike. Makoto Nike. She just kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? Huh? You don't know? If you want to remember someone's name, you gotta write it on your hand three times. I've never heard that before in my life. Mm. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spell it exactly like it, mm. how it sounds. Mm. <laughs> well, I have no idea. I guess let's figure it out later and write it down. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, glad to meet you. Sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned is that she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. <clears throat> Hello. Nice Chihiro! Chihiro. 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 <laughs> I love you. Ultimate Programmer, Chihiro Fujisaki. <clears throat> Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. <laughs> anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here, nice to meet you. Huh? Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Um, no, I don't think so. We just met for the first time, which is why I said nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, good point. Sorry. You don't have to apologize for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chihiro Fujisaki is known for all the cutting edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to a legion of fans. Um. Hey, so listen. Uh, I'm sorry. 
But what are you apologizing for now? Um, well, just because you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? No, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Huh? Lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. Oh, that's good. I was afraid that maybe you didn't like me. <laughs> I'm glad. I love you so much. I'm starting to understand why your friends are so into her. Uh, do you like how the punk characters in the series, as soon as it helps Pete change his passion to something else? Yeah, and also, Allie must be protect. Agreed. Do hero seems sus. Anyone apologizing that much is guilty of something. Don't you dare! Don't you dare slander your hero's name like that! How could you? How could you say that? Jiro has never done anything wrong in her entire life. Jiro is the best character. <laughs> <clears throat> getting a drink, getting a drink. My voice is starting to die. Cutie! Yes, agreed. Even if Jihiro did do something wrong, they're so cute they could it makes up for it immediately. Actual baby. Uh. Once again, I am cast aside by the camera. I'm gonna try opening a window. Alright, I'm back. Um, did I plan on playing the whole game in cards, or is this a one-off? Honestly, I was planning on just playing as far as I can now. I'm hoping to finish it in one video, if possible, although I doubt it will be. You know, other things to do today. I'm hoping that I don't get too tired of the game, but, um, if I don't finish it today, I'll try to just do it in multiple parts. I don't want to abandon the game. <laughs> I want to see it through to the end on the channel, if possible. In which case, I might start streaming a bit, like, streaming some games a bit more often, streaming some art a bit more often. That's like 12 hours? Yeah, but I mean, longer streams exist. I'm starting to understand why your fans are so into her. Alright. Go, go! Um... Can I ask her name? My name is Kyoko Kiryu. Ultimate, hmm? Kyoko Kiryu. She's pretty tight-lipped, huh? Oh, but you know, her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope Speak Academy thread. And I did see that there were students like me, ones who didn't have any real identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Um, so what are you doing at this school? What? What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you have some kind of ultimate something, right? What ultimate something are you? That doesn't matter. Why should I tell you? Huh? Well... I guess you don't have to tell me. 
No, I don't have to tell you, so I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked up by chance like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. If she doesn't want to tell me anything, there's no point in asking. I me wish I wore pants. It's getting cold in here. Hi! I'm Junko Enoshima. Charmed, I'm sure. Ultimate fashion Fashionista, Junko Enoshima. Anybody would recognize this one. He's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. He's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like it doesn't quite match up to reality. Huh? Oh, are you talking about my cover photos and things? <laughs> well, of course, those are totally Photoshop. Photoshop? Yeah, you know, edited to hell and back with, like, computers and junk. Oh, so they aren't real. What can we do? Come on, no, not so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. Totally. It's totally normal these days to Photoshop the crap out of cover photos. If you're surprised by that, you'd be totally blown away by a certain little dangerous diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk super big and tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. Oh. So many dreams are getting crushed today. Are you saying freckles aren't cute, Nagi? Because I'll beat you up. <laughs> I swear I'll beat you up. Don't you dare. Freckles on anime girls are cute. Freckles on girls are cute! Freckles are cute! <laughs> I will stand by this till I die. Freckles are such a cute trait. Let me look at this first. That surveillance camera has what looks like a gun attached to it. But there's no way that's a real gun, right? Holy cow, what's with this huge metal hatch? Looks like the kind of thing you'd see in a secret military base or something. This is the same main hall I was in before, right? The door definitely wasn't here then, though. Name's Mondo Awada. Nice to fucking meet you. Ooh, Mondo said the fuck word. Ultimate biker gang leader, Mondo Awada. Mondo Awada, huh? Which means. He's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's earned respect, even all from every gang in, in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. Um, nice to meet you too. Yo. Hell yeah. I better be careful around him. One wrong word and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. If you look out, you could totally get, you could get the early ending. God, I don't remember what that is. It sounds familiar, but I don't know what the early ending is. Oh no. Those four over there are the only ones left. I am Sakura Okami. Sakura! Ultimate martial artist. Oh geez, I almost asked her if she was a guy. Makoto! The day I say something like that out loud is the day I get turned into a human meatball. And now I remember, she competed in a martial arts tournament in America and won, despite being a girl. She's the ultimate martial artist. She fought in over 400 matches and never lost a single one. The thread also said a little bit more about her. Was that character a JoJo reference? No! The biker kids just exist. Some call her Ogre. Some even think she's the closest known relative to the primates, the famed missing link. Rude and rude! Uh, any incoming Hope Speak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. Why? Standing in front of her now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Hey. Hey, you. Mm, yes? I snapped her attention without even realizing it. Then she started to poke and prod at my body. Um, what are you... Muscular quality and quantity is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. <clears throat> what a shame. You're not at all fit to act as my training partner. I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. Name's Byakuya Togami. Hey, uh, ultimate affluent prod progeny. Progeny! His gang is called Crazy Giant. 
So? <laughs> There's also a song called that. <laughs> Hi, uh, nice to meet you. I refuse to say that Mondo is a JoJo reference. That's the most half-assed introduction I've ever heard. But there isn't really anything I can do about it. Even among the ultimate students, this one is special. Byakuya Togami. He's the heir apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. You don't like Togami? I kinda like him. Although I do like all the shitheads. He's already started managing business operations and his own personal assets are, well, vast. His title of Ultimate Affluent Progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. That's everything I learned about him from that Hope's Peak Academy thread online. Come on. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? Go away, I'm sick of looking at you. His aura says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level. Like a king in training. You gotta get better at customer service, man. Yasuhiro Hagakure. I'm Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hero for short. Take it easy, yeah? I know I will. <laughs> yeah, the definition of taking it easy, man. Ultimate clairvoyant, Yasuhiro Hagakure. Yasuhiro Hagakure, known as Supernova in the psychic community, the trend-setting ultimate clairvoyant. Honestly, I don't really get all that fortune telling stuff. It's pretty much beyond me. So I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. it be? Ah, okay, I give up. Hmm? What happened? Serious. I saw it. I looked right at it. Seriously, I totally saw it. Saw what? Hmm. A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off of the skyfish in his mouth. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But hey, we should grab some brewski sometime and get real deep into Lemuria and its civilization. What? We're not allowed to drink? We're in high school. You know? Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times, see, and, well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. Celeste! I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludendor. Ultimate Gambler. Celestia Luden... Huh? <laughs> Ludenberg. It is my name, but if you don't mind, I would prefer you to call me Celeste. Um, you are Japanese, right? Huh? Of course, why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Celestia Ludenberg is my real name. But as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. I guess the rumors in that thread are right about her. The self-styled Celestia Ludenberg. She's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. <laughs> I look forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> That smile is beyond deceptive. I had better watch myself around her. And with that, all the introductions are done. Hmm, even though they're all ultimate, they each have their own individual sort of, um, something. Hmm. Okay, time to get down to business. This is no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull-eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something? What was that about? Um, listen. Well, you see... Um, Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, the same is true for all of us. What? Seriously? Seriously? Just after each of us got into the main hall, we lost consciousness. When we came to, we were somewhere in the, we were somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But, but that's just weird that every one of us would get knocked out like that. Exactly! That's why we're all freaking out! Hmm. That's not the only thing. You saw where all the windows and class and the classes and hallways were, right? <coughs> you s ugh. Ah, my guy voice are getting mixed up. But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What was that about? Are you for real? Plus, all my stuff's missing. Even my cell phone. Um. 
Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA in here either. PDA, oh my goodness. And there's the main hall here. And there's the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch. What does this mean? But there wasn't anything like that when I first got here. What the heck? What the heck? What's it doing here? Maybe we got caught up in some kind of, like, you know, crime or something? Is it, like... What? Like a kidnapping? You think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at school? Hey, come on. Come on, don't think like that. Cheer up. I bet this is all part this part of the school's orientation procedure. You know? Yeah, I'm sure that's it, so I'm just gonna take it easy for a little bit. Oh, so you think they wanted to do something to surprise us? What the hell? <clears throat> huh? Oh, well, that's all it is. It's nap time for me. You know what I mean. It was up way too late last night, so I could use a little shut eye. I could feel everyone's tension evaporating. But then, it began. Why, uh, ultimate fortune teller, 30% of the time, it works every time. Yeah. Uh, why are girls who are into gambling anime always, or are into gambling in anime always quirky? Yeah, I wonder. Yumino uh, Takagure was pretty fun too, wasn't she? Her name was Yumino, right? I think so. Japami Yume no, Yumeko. Japami Yumeko. Yumino was the other girl. <laughs> Here we go! Ahem. Ahem. Testing, testing! Mic check, one, two! This is a test of the school broadcast system! Am I on? Can everyone hear me? Okay, well then. The voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned. I couldn't help but fear, feel a deep, unnerving dread at the sound of it. It was like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident. Uh, to all incoming students, I would like to begin the entrance ceremony at... Right now! Please make your way to the gymnasium at your earliest convenience. That's all. I'll be waiting. I love that description, his voice being like an accident. Like someone laughing at an accident. The other anime girl into gambling with red hair and black e with black hair and red eyes makes a face. Yeah, uh, Yumiko. I like her. <clears throat> what the hell was that just now? Goodbye. Well then, if you'll excuse me. Hey! Hey! What? Hey! What? Are you gonna? Hey! <laughs> hey! What? Are you just gonna take off just like that? Could it be? Oh yeah, now I get it. This whole thing was just to get us pumped for the entrance ceremony. <laughs> Man, thank God it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked if this was real. You know? All right, guess I'll head out too. Wonder what they got planned for us next. Uh... Damn! I was totally looking forward to that nap too. I'd have to go and kill the mood. Huh? Wait for me. I want to go with you. <laughs> That's that, then. I will see you all there. Anyway... N not that anyone cares, but I I I'm gonna go, too. Everyone took off for the gym, but I was frozen where I stood. That uneasy feeling I'd had before, I couldn't get it out of my mind. And it looked like I wasn't the only one. Uh, um... This... this doesn't seem right. This is bad. Yeah, that announcement was totally weird. However... Maybe, but just staying put doesn't mean we'll be safe. Besides, aren't you guys just a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? I see. If we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. I... I guess she's right. But still, I'm kinda... No, really nervous. We don't have a choice. We have to go. They said to go to the gym, right? Save the data! Boop. Well... Let's just overwrite the first save. Yeah. Yeah, especially when she goes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Alright, so you all still have reservations, eh? Uh, I forget how to check what we did. Yeah. I've already checked all that stuff. Oh, no. Huh. The only choice is to push ahead. Blah, blah, blah. This is what I wanted to check. A mailbox. There's nothing inside. Uh, 
All right. <clears throat> Just making sure no one else has anything to say. Um, something weird is going on here, right? Is that just me? Just give me. Wow. Are you okay? Is everyone okay? Shit! What the hell kind of game are they playing? What the hell? Is this some kind of bad joke? Listen. I know how you feel, but all you can do is check it out, right? This is bad. What was with that announcement? It was like totally creepy. Alright. The moment when you realize Yu-Gi-Oh! started as a gambling manga? Yeah, it was just like a horror gambling manga. It was Pretty good. It's fun. I think. Sometimes I think maybe Yu-Gi-Oh should go back to his core root. Alright. All this stuff around here. The Sparrow Hotel. Alright, back to the gym. I wonder how these segments play on stream. Oh, they look like they run pretty well. <laughs> Surprising. Cool zone 1F. I like how it looks like uh, like, you know, the LED lights in a club or electric or something. Not LED, uh, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. I wish I could jump. Mmm, I love that door texture. Definitely doesn't look painted on the wall. Hey, come on. <clears throat> God, I had no idea this Hope Seek Academy place was gonna be such a pain in my ball. It really ain't that much different from the time I spent in Juvie. Hell, this place is even worse. Um, and why isn't anyone else? And why isn't anyone here? Walking through the halls, I didn't see a single person. This is bad. Isn't that like seriously not good? Uh, Th they're trying to spook us. They'll take those metal plates down later. I'm sure of it. Huh. All we can do now is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Uh, well, hell, it ain't like I'm scared or nothing. Let's just get this over with. Hey, damn it. Hey, where's whoever called us here? What are you thinking? Mondo, stop! Stop! Ru no running! Well, I too shall go. Hey, wait! Don't leave me all alone! Okay, time for more su tutorial action. You can press tab to observe the room you're in. Observing will display what people and objects you can interact with. Sorry for the late notice. Don't worry, I already got it. <laughs> Alright, objects first. Display case. There are all kinds of trophies and, pla and plaques inside. Of course, all the students who go here are ultimate, right? So this is probably just a tiny fraction of their award. The school has a lot of TVs. They couldn't all just be for that weird school broadcast, could they? Another surveillance camera. I feel like we're being watched every second. I don't like it. Don't go, thoughts? This is bad. I'm totally getting a bad vibe right now. Um... Where are all the other students? Why are we the only ones here? Total silence. For whatever reason, she's the only one managing to stay calm. Or maybe I'm just imagining that. Alright. Last check. Last check. Last check. I don't think there's anything else in here. Out we go. Lights through plastic. Still filled with uneasy dread, I did what the announcement said and went to the gym. And I saw waiting for us there. No, and I saw what was waiting for us there. 
Oh, it really does look like an entry ceremony. Yo. See, told you, it's totally normal for it's totally normal entry ceremony stuff. Hero was right. But in a way that just emphasized how completely not normal all of us were. Hey there, howdy, hello! Is everyone here? Good! Then let's get things rolling! Uh, <laughs> I hate that you make me grin. Huh? A teddy bear? I'm not a teddy bear. I am Monokuma! And I am this school headmaster! It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Right before my eyes, it was... What I was seeing was... It was utterly incomprehensible. Your bright voice and carefree attitude was completely out of place. Now that anxiety I'd been carrying with me suddenly transformed into outright fear. Hey, that teddy can talk? <laughs> Calm down, I'm sure there's just a speaker inside it. Hey, come on now. I told you already, I'm not a teddy bear. I'm Mama Puma, and I'm your headmaster. Seriously, man, calm down. It's probably just a remote control toy or something. How dare you compare me to a child's plaything? You cut me deep, deeper than the Mariana Trench. <laughs> My remote control system is so complex, even the folks at NASA can't recreate or even comprehend it. Oh, don't let me say stuff that might destroy NASA's dreams. I just couldn't bear that. Mm -hmm. Bear that? Really? You are unfortunate. <laughs> Unfortunate. Hmm. Now then, moving on, we really must hurry and get started. Hmm. Giving up already? No other stupid bear puns? Now then. Quiet down now, quiet down. Ah, okay, so. Huh. He has abandoned the gag. Good morning! Everyone stand with attention and bow, and good, good morning. morning! Good morning! What's your problem? You don't have to say it back. Now then. Let us commence with the most noteworthy and memorable entrance ceremony. First, let's talk about a bit about what your school life here will be like. Now, uh, make no mistake, you few students so full of potential represent the hope of the world. And to protect such splendid hope, you will all live a communal life together solely within the confines of this school. Everyone will live in harmony together and adhere to the rules and regulations of the school. Huh? Now then, regarding the end date for this communal life, there isn't one! In other words, you'll all be here until the day you die! Such is the school life you've been assigned. But what did he just say? Until the day we th die? Yep. Oh, but fear not. We have quite an abundant budget, so you won't lack for all the common inconveniences. Uh, hold on a second. That's the least of our worries right now. Hmm. Yeah, what the hell? You're saying I have to live here forever? You're screwing with us, right? Mm. I'm not screwing with you. I am no liar. Of that you can 100% be sure. Uh -huh. Ah, and just for your information, you're completely cut off from the outside world. So you don't have to worry about that dirty, dirty land beyond these walls ever again. Cut off? With all those metal plates all over the school. They're here to keep us trapped there? Uh, they're there to keep us trapped in here? <laughs> Good job, then. Is the rich kid voiced by Virgil from Devil May Cry? He might be. I don't know. I've never played Devil May Cry. So, no clue. So many things happening all of a sudden. Alright, I'll answer that question later. <clears throat> That's exactly what they're there for. No matter how much you may yell and scream for help, help will not come. So with all of that in mind, feel free to live out your life here with reckless abandon. Come on. Come on, what the hell is this? I don't care if the school or whatever else is behind this. This is just a really bad joke. Damn you. Yeah, cut that shit out. It isn't funny anymore. I'm being You're saying this is a lie or a joke. A bunch of 
skeptics all of you. But I guess you can't help it, huh? You all grew up at an age where you're, where you're taught to doubt your neighbor. Well, you have plenty of time to find out whether or not what I say is true. And when that time comes, you'll see with your own eyeballs that I tweet the undeniable truth. Having to live here forever would be quite the problem. What's this? Come now, what's the matter with all of you? You decided of your own free will to attend Hope Speak Academy, didn't you? And now, before the entrance ceremony is even finished, you've already decided you want to leave? Hey, um... Oh, but you know, I guess I did forget to mention one thing. There is one way for you to leave the school. Hey. Uh, really? Actually... As headmaster, I've crafted a special clause for those of you who'd like to leave. I call it the graduation clause. Now then. Let me tell you about this fun little rule. As I mentioned, in order to maintain an environment of harmony here, we rely on a communal lifestyle. And if someone were to disrupt that harmony, they and they alone would be allowed to leave the school. That, my students, is the graduation clause. What do you mean by disrupt the harmony? <laughs> well, you know, if one person were to murder another, Murder? Yes, indeed. Stabbing, strangling, bludgeoning, crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting, how you do it doesn't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave. It's as simple as that. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Give it your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst way possible. A chill shot down my spine. You must kill someone if you want to leave. As soon as I heard those words, my blood went cold. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that got your brain juice is flowing. Eat the heck out of a human catching a salmon, huh? Like I said before, you guys are the hope of the world. But you know, catching that hope and seeing you get murdered creates the darkened shadow of despair. And I just find that so dark and exciting! What the hell? What the hell are you talking about? To kill each other is... it's... To kill each other is to kill each other. I'm sure there's a dictionary here somewhere if you need it. We know what it means, that's not the problem! Why do we have to kill each other? Yeah! Stop, blab stop blabbering on with all this nonsense! Just let us go home already! Blabbering? Blabbering? What do you mean, blabbering? Stop blabbering on about blabbering on! <laughs> you guys just don't get it, do you? Let us go! Let us go! You keep on saying the same thing over and over and over and over? Listen, from this moment on, this school is your home, your life, your world, you got it? And you can kill as much as you want to kill, so go ahead! Go on! Kill, kill, kill! I'm Alright, come on. How long are you gonna keep this up? Hmm? Yeah? You know? You got us, okay? You scared the hell out of us, so you can go ahead and reveal the trick now. Huh? Reveal the trick? I'm right, right? Yeah, because I mean, you know, this is some kind of trick and all, right? So, uh, like... Dude, shut the hell up and get out of my way. Shoving Hero aside, Mondo placed himself in front of Monokuma, his voice rumbling like thunder. Listen up, asshole! This shit's gone way too far! What the hell kind of joke is this? What's the matter? Joe? What? You mean, like, your hair? You son of a bitch! <laughs> Mondo roared out, and then there was a sudden BOOM! It was the sound of the floorboard as he kicked off and launched himself into the air. He flew at Monokuma, fast and straight as a bullet. He locked onto his target. Gotcha, you little piece of shit! I don't know if you're a toy or a stuffed animal or whatever the hell. Uh, Alright, let me... While we're in this section, I'll look up. Reuben Christopher Langdon. Alright, next. Biaki. Donglin Rampa. V. A. They are not the same person. Either way, I'm gonna rip you to fucking shreds! What? Violence against the headmaster is in violation of school regulations! Shut the fuck up! Let me out of here, I swear to Christ! Ooh, Mondo believes in Christ. They do sound similar, I think. From what little I've heard. Hey, damn it! What, no smartass comeback this time? Piece of shit! Stop that goddamn beeping and say something! Watch out! 
Watch out, get rid of it! Huh? huh? Hurry up and throw it! I don't know if her ferocity sent him into silence or what, but without a word, he did what he was told. He threw Monokuma. And as soon as he did... The hell? Th that sure as shit wasn't a joke! It blew up! There was a painful ringing in my ears and I could smell gunpowder. Explosions may happen all the time in movies or whatever, but when it's real life, I'd never seen anything like it. But you know, that this means the teddy bear has been destroyed, right? I told you, I'm not a teddy bear. I'm Monokuma. What? There's another one? You son of a bitch. You seriously tried to kill me just now. Well, yes, I was serious about trying to kill you. You did violate one of the school regulations, after all. I'll let you off with a warning this time, but you'd better be careful from now on. Any naughty boy or girl who violates my rules won't get off with just a little swat on the butt. This is bad. Hey, so does this mean there's, like, a bunch more of you around somewhere? Yep. Monokumas have been placed all throughout the school, yes. Plus, don't forget the surveillance cameras installed everywhere. And if you're caught breaking any rules, well, you all saw what just happened, right? <laughs> I will be so forgiving with my punishment next time, so don't let it happen again. Huh? That's not even punishment, that's just... wrong. Well? Now then, lastly, to commemorate your joyous entry into our school, I have a little something for you. This is our official student handbook. Pretty cool, right? As you can see, it's fully digital, so naturally we call it... The E-Handbook! Yes, well, moving on. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. When you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. Also, it's completely waterproof. Splash it, wash it, drown it, it'll keep on ticking. And thanks to its space age design, it can withstand an impact force of up to 10 tons. Very resistant. It contains all of our school regulations, so make sure you review them thoroughly. Guys. You'll hear me say this a lot, but any violation of school regulations will not be tolerated. The rules are strict, yes, but they also protect. Society, for example, would be utter chaos without laws. Yes, indeed. The same thing applies here, which is why it's crucial we have strict punishments in place for violators. Okay, well, that brings our entrance ceremony to a close. Please enjoy your abundantly dreary school life, and see ya! And with that, he was gone, leaving us all in a state of shock. So, so guys, how would you define what we just experienced? How? Why? I don't understand any of this. We have to li live here forever, or kill? What? What just happened? Calm down. Everyone, we need to just calm down. First, let's take a second to summarize everything we just heard. Based on what Monokuma said, we essentially have two choices. Choice number one is that we each stay here living a communal life together until the day we die. And the other choice is, if we want to get out of here alive, we'll have to kill someone, right? If killing someone, that's... We were abducted out of nowhere and stepped into this place meant to look like a school. And now we're supposed to start killing each other? This is... This is just... This is... What is this? Ridiculous. A lie is what it is. All these ridiculous things we've heard, this all has to be fake. Hmm. Right now, it doesn't really matter if it's real or fake. What matters so is... In other words... Is there anyone here who's seriously considering all this? To that, nobody had a response. Keeping quiet myself, I looked around at the others. They all stared at one another, trying to gauge each other's thoughts. I could almost taste the hostility. That's when it hit me. I realized the true terror hidden within the rules Monokuma had laid out. You must kill someone if you want to leave. Those words had planted vicious thoughts deep within each of us. Each of us became suspicious of everyone else. We were forced to wonder, is someone going to betray us? And that was how my new school life began. The school which had come out of nowhere to raise my hopes so high. It's not a school of hope. It's a school of despair. Prologue, welcome to despair. The end. <laughs> All right, we finished the prologue. All of us are still alive so far. 
I would love to play a randomized Danganronpa game. I imagine that would be so fun. Oh! Opening soon. Trigger Happy Havoc. Oh, you received the school crest present. Do you want to save the data? Yes, please. <clears throat> Good moment, game. All right. Everything's working just fine. I just need to take my foot out from under my butt because I decide to sit on my foot every time I get up and sit back down. The dumb move of me. I don't know why I do it every time. It hurts so much. You must kill someone if you want to leave. My mind froze and my breath caught in my throat as I thought about it. I can feel a paralyzing fear slowly making its way through my body, dominating every last nerve. You fool, yes, I'm a fool. <laughs> the air hung heavy on me, pressing down like a weight around my neck. I took everything I had just to endure that weight. Chapter one, to survive. Daily life. But for as heavy as the air fell, all it took to pierce it with her was her sharp yeah. words. So, what are we going to do now? Hey. Just stand around glaring at each other? Her pointed comment was directed at everyone in the room. It helps pull us back to reality. R right She's right. Listen to me! Sometimes, even if you're nervous or afraid, you just have to step forward. To forget such a simple fact, I can't forgive myself. I'm so ashamed. You hear me? Please, someone hit me! I can't forgive myself! Somebody hit me! Punish me! Huh? Oh. Jesus, if you have time to yell about it, you have time to do something about it. However... Perhaps, but what is the mission exactly? Stupid. Idiot, to look for a way out. Duh. What the? We totally need to find whoever is controlling that stupid bear and beat the hell out of him. But, but, but before we do all that, maybe we should take a look at the handbook. Probably best to check out the school regulations Monokuma mentioned before doing anything else. This is fine. True. If we stumble around with no clue what the rules are, something like that might happen again. Shit. Alright. So then... Fine, then let's hurry up and check out the stupid rules already. Alright, after turning on my e-handbook, the first thing that appeared was my name. So, just like Monokuma said, the owner's name showed up front and center. Then, from the main menu that popped up, I selected the school regulations icon. 
An itemized list appeared on the screen. It was the school regulations. In other words, the rules being imposed on us all. Students may reside only within the school. Leaving campus is an unacceptable use of time. Nighttime is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and, in class and punished accordingly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope Speaks Academy at your discretion. Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is strictly prohibited, as well as his destruction of surveillance cameras. Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes blackened will graduate unless they are discovered. Additional school regulations may be added as necessary. Feeling a slight dizziness, I raised my face up from the screen. As I looked around, I saw the same stormy expression on everyone's faces. Stop fucking around. This is bullshit! What the hell kind of rules are these? I'm not gonna let them control me! <laughs> well then, why don't you wander around the school without a care in the world and see what happens? Personally, I would love to see what happens when someone breaks the rule. However... But if he got punished like what we saw before, I don't think there will be a respawn waiting for him. Yo. I... Ever since I was a kid, I grew up with my older brother pounding this into my head. When a man makes a promise, he has to keep it, even if it kills him. And... So... What? What? I made a ton of promises that I still have to keep, that's so what? Piece of shit. So I can't afford to die in here! <sighs> None of that makes much sense to me, but you are saying you will follow the regulations, is that it? That's true. Huh. Oh, well... Yeah, I guess you're right. Um... Hey, um... I have a question. For regulation number six, what do you think it means exactly? Anyone who kills a fellow student becomes black and will graduate, unless they are discovered. You're talking about the second half, right? Where it says, unless they are discovered? I was wondering about that myself. It's saying that if you want to graduate, you have to kill someone without anyone finding out it was you. But, but why? Why? Why do we have to do that? I don't see any reason to worry about it. Just worry about following the rules as they've been explained to us. Such ignorance. Frankly, I don't want to hear anything from someone who waits for others to decide what to do for them. <laughs> don't jab at me. Give me a break. More like a full-on stab. Hmm. Well, for now, let's forget all that silly joke about murders or whatever. Okay. Now that we know the rules, let's start exploring the school. Hmm. True, we need to find out where exactly we are. Is there any way out? What about food and supplies? You understand? There are tons of questions we need to answer. Let's do it! Damn straight! Okay then, let's all start looking around. Hmm. I'll be going alone. What? What? Why? That's a pretty stupid idea, don't you think? Hmm. Someone here might have already started thinking about murdering one of us. Are you saying we should stand around with them in our midst and make it that much easier for them? Hold on a second. Oh, wait, hold on a second. That would never... What? Don't bother saying it couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. That's why you all seized up with fear when that graduation rule was made clear to you. That's cute and all. But, like, wandering off by yourself doesn't make you safe. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Uh, um... But... Hmm. So I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for me. Yeah, wandering off alone. Like a chicken in a horror movie. Just hold on. Hold on. What, like, hell am I gonna let you run off and do whatever you want? What? Out of my way, Plankton. What? <laughs> The fuck's that supposed to mean? Such One tiny bit of plankton drifting across the sea. So minuscule, so insignificant, they couldn't possibly have any kind of influence on the boundless ocean. You're fucking dead. I'm gonna kick your ass! <laughs> Stop it, we shouldn't what? fight! The fuck you just say? You some kind of goody goody little bitch? You wanna slow down? Who do you think you are talking to me like that? You think you're my fucking dad or something? No, I wasn't. You son of a bitch! Fuck you! Okay, man. Wham! He punched me, and I flew back in a heap. It was like something straight out of a comic book. I didn't even see the punch coming, it was just suddenly right there in my face. One second I was standing there, the next I was soaring through the air. Now that I think about it, maybe I'd kind of forgotten the kind of people I'd been trapped in here with. My common sense had just stopped functioning. Being around all these ultimates had blown my fuses. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised it led to something as absurd as this. But I just lost track of that reality, of that sense of reality. That was my last thought as my consciousness started to fade, before it finally cut out completely. Ah, uh, Dungan, we do be rompin'! Accusey shooty and bang bang. <laughs>
Yeah, hey Leo, we do be romping though. And when I finally opened my eyes again, what I saw was... Pretty nice. Ugh. Huh? Where am I? As if it had become part of my daily routine, I woke up in yet another room I'd never seen before. Okay, so... Where am I now? You now have access to the handbook menu. You can, use to you can use this to check a variety of information as you play. Open the handbook menu by pressing F1. You can use this menu to check the school regulations and character info in the report card section. At certain points, map and truth bullets may not be available. You can also save and load game data under the system section. Finally, press the F2 key to review the transcript. These records, this records all pertinent info, so use this to review comments from everyone involved. Right, right, right. So, F2. How far up? Right. Pretty far. And F1 for my handbook. Where's the crest? Give me the crest. I believe they said that. Yep, there it is. Proof that you've cleared the prologue. It's a patch that displays the Hope Pe Hope's Peak Academy school crest. Report card. This is where we can view all our students. It tells us things like their birthdays and stuff. Well, actually I don't think it has birthdays in this one, but in the next few games it will. Uh, right, my computers are so weird. Tell us how tall everyone is. Nike's so short. I don't know if you should say he's average in that respect. God, six foot one? All the girls are so thin. 97 pounds? Don't go, you're taller than me. You shouldn't be 97 pounds. 90 pounds? It's a hero! Alright, and looking over the rules one more time. Manlet, yeah! Ten to seven. Alright. You checked out pretty much all of that stuff in the handbook. Now we look around. It's a notepad. I guess the school must have given one to each of us. There's some kind of metal plate mounted here. Is it to keep us all trapped in here? It's some kind of lint roller. I guess we're supposed to clean up after ourselves. This must be the key to the room. My name's written on the keychain. Which means it must be mine, right? I better hang on to it for now. That's an everyday trash can. I don't see any kind of trapdoor or hidden compartments or anything. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly strange about the bed. This would appear to be the bathroom. Hmm? It's not opening. I guess it's locked. There's a piece of paper hanging up on the wall which says... Announcement from Headmaster Monokuma. Each room's lock has been designed to completely protect against tampering or lock picking. Remaking an individual room key is quite troublesome, so please make sure not to lose yours. Your room comes furnished with a shower, but please note that the water is turned off at night time. Also, the bathrooms and the girls' rooms include a lock of their own. Finally, we prepared a small gift for each of you. For the girls, a sewing kit. And for the boys, a toolkit. The sewing kit includes a map of the body's vital organs. The one stab will do the job, girl! For the boys, we believe a strong blow to the head with any of the tools should be ample. Don't think, just feel. And let's all enjoy ourselves! 
I crumpled up the piece of paper and threw it in the trash. Behind a monitor. Ugh. What didn't I check? That's pretty much everything. Boop, boop. Yeah, you can look at the surveillance camera. Surveillance camera. I hate the idea that someone might be watching me right now. We're not allowed to mess with the camera, so I'd better make sure I don't touch it. Alright. And without further ado, let's get out of here. Looks like this door leads outside. It's locked. Some, so some of the rooms have locks, huh? I can't... Get out? For now, I should look... Okay, I guess I'm missing something. I was sure I'd gotten everything, but I guess not. What am I missing? What am I missing? We'll check this one. Oh, I need to find the toolkit. Let's look at my bathroom door again. This would appear to be the bathroom. Rattle, rattle. Huh? Oh, it's not opening. Guess it's locked. Your bathroom shouldn't be locked, stupid. Metal plate mounted here. Mm, I'm always not great at these segments just because. All that's in the trash can is the paper I wadded up and threw away. Keep looking. I'll keep looking. I'll keep looking. Here it is. Looks like there's something in the drawer. The toolkit. Must be brand new. It's still in the shrink wrap. I don't really need it right now, so I'll just leave it here. I think I'm starting to understand. This room must be. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. This is my assigned dorm room. Someone must have carried me here after I fell unconscious. So that answers that question. The next question is... What's everyone else up to right now? There's only one way to find out. It's to get out of here. Chihiro is shortest and Sakura is tallest? Oh, let me look. Oh yeah, 4 foot 10. Chihiro is shortest by like... Couple inches. Yeah, and six foot four. Sakura is definitely tallest. As it should be. I agree. Um, I rushed out of the room to meet up with all the others. But there was someone waiting for me there. It was like something out of an old TV show. Ah! Sup? Oh. Sayaka? Sorry. Are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. I hope you're okay. Sorry about that. She had an embarrassed smile on her face. I stood up slowly. Are you okay, Saika? Are you hurt? <laughs> You're making it sound worse than it is. I'm completely fine. I know how I look, but I've actually built up some pretty good muscle jumping up and down on stage. That's good then. Um... But are you okay? You know, from when Mondo hit you? That's true. I got knocked out right there in front of everyone. I guess I revealed my lack of cool right from the beginning. Oh, uh, I'm fine. Nothing wrong here. That's good. Oh, that's good. I was kind of worried. Uh, thanks. By the way, what are you doing here? Uh, um... Actually, I came to get you. You came to get me? Um, listen. Well, if you're really feeling better, I was hoping you, co you could come to the dining hall. The dining hall? You see. After you got knocked out, everyone decided to go and do their own thing. We decided it would be more effective if we split up to investigate. So we agreed to get together later on and talk about what we each found out. So 
So does that mean it's almost time to get back together? If that's what's going on, then of course I'll go with you. That's good. Good, then I'll go on ahead and meet you at the dining hall then. Alright. Making our way through the U-shaped corridor. Checking stuff out. Everyone's meeting up at the dining hall. I should head there myself. Yeah, yeah. Railroad me harder, why don't you? It is worth making. The room set up. Seems like boy. Well, okay. Seems like. Maggie's weirdly the only guy on. Okay, there we go. Jen goes on that side. Doesn't seem like any true rhyme or reason. Of course, we can always check the map. Yeah, there's no real rhyme or reason to the room set up, seems. Where was I going? Right, the dining hall. What's this? Yeah, this is the laundry room. No. Everyone's meeting up. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. You're no fun, Nike. Did she have toast in her mouth? <laughs> Railroading giggity. That must be a dining- This must be the dormitory dining hall. Um, looks pretty clean, so that's good. Uh, I guess it's not really important right now with us being prisoners and all. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, it's still nice that it's clean. Nobody was there waiting for us. We don't really have much choice. I guess we should just wait here for now. Hmm, okay. Let's just wait here. You heard that? Like I said, I'm psychic. <laughs> Come on, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I, ha I just have amazing intuition. Is it really just intuition? Kind of sudden, I know, but here comes the tutorial. Let's talk about reactions. You're going to be talking to Sayaka, right? Well, while you're talking to her, some purple words are going to appear. Here's how they work. When they show up, if you press the right mouse button, you'll go into reaction mode. At this point, you can use WAS to make a selection and left mouse button to confirm. Also, when it comes to that dialogue, you can review whatever you talked about to look for more info. Talking to someone about things like this is called a reaction. Okay, do your best to enjoy your ever-important school life! Ah, you've gone ahead and used it already? Well, that's just wonderful. Make sure you keep it in mind as the story keeps moving forward. Hey, um... By the way, Makoto... Hmm, what is it? Um... Well, it's just... I know this is kind of continuing the self-introduction thing. Continuing our self-introductions? Um, you kind of got cut off before, but I had a question I wanted to ask you. Sayaka wants to ask me something? I wonder what it is. Now I'm really curious. Hey, um... But I wanted to ask you something. Oops. There we go. What did you want to ask me? Makoto, did you happen to go to Blackroot Junior High? Were you maybe in class too? Yeah, actually, I was. I knew it! I went there too! I was in class 4, though. Do you remember me? Do I remember? Even back in middle school, she was a celebrity with all kinds of ultimates surrounding her. How could I forget? Almost as surprising as her question was, that she remembered me. We never even talked to each other, but somehow she still knew who I was. Hey, um... Hey, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm just surprised is all. I wouldn't have thought you'd remember me. You went to the same school for three years. Of course I'd remember. Well, that's true, but there were a lot of students in our grade, right? Plus, I've never been the type of person to ever really stand out. I've never did everything, and all my hobbies are totally normal. Even normal would call me boring. Aww. What are you talking about? You're so strange. S strange, that's... <laughs> I mean, look at your hair for one. She started giggling even louder. That somehow mysterious smile of hers made my heart grow calmer. Her smile was the nicest smile I'd ever seen. That's good. A anyway, I'm really glad that I know somebody here. <sighs> Talking to you has made me feel better about all this. You're amazing, Makoto. N no, I'm really not. 
I'm nothing at all compared to all you ultimates. But you're the one that helped me find my courage again. Not any of those ultimate students. Thank you for saying that. Okay. And to thank you for helping me out, I'm going to become your ultimate assistant. My assistant? <laughs> yep, I'm your assistant now. I'm going to help you out as much as I can, so let's get out of here together. When she says things like that, it, it, get, it just gets me pumped up. Which is nice, but still. Everyone else is still late. Besides that, I don't even know what time it is right now. There must be a clock around here somewhere. Um, so what time is it right now? What, 7 o'clock at night? Uh, um. We were unconscious for a pretty long time. I see. Without being able to look out a window, I've lost all sense of time. If I have to stay in this place for too long, I might just go crazy. Hey, um. I can't believe no one's here yet, but I'm sure they'll start showing up soon. Almost like you timed it, Kaka threw open the dining room, well, dining hall doors as soon as Sayaka said that. Hey! Ah, oh, Makoto, Sayaka, so you two got here first, Rep. Huh? Too bad, I was sure I'd beat everyone here. I guess that just means I don't have enough fighting spirit yet. Well, I won't give up. Next time I swear I'll win, no matter what it takes. Justice shall always prevail! <laughs> That's a bit much, don't you think? And soon after that, everyone else came strolling in one after another. After a few minutes, everyone had gathered in the dining hall. Okay, it looks like everyone's here. Time to start the meeting! Oh, thank you. Get my all voice up great. And share what we found out during our respective investigations. The sooner we find out what's going on, the sooner we get out of here. Oof. More like naggy, <laughs> yeah. Gosh, naggy, live a little. talking about uh, what's wrong hmm. what about uh what's her name you know the silver-haired girl <gasps> oh oh yeah Kyoko hmm. what about her hmm. she's not here <laughs> what I took another look around the dining hall sure enough she was nowhere to be seen um I wonder where she went has anyone seen her but everyone just shook their head hmm? wait so nobody's seen her why hasn't Kyoko shown up yet? Could it be because... Yes, indeed! Stabbing, strangling, pledging, crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting, what you do, it doesn't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave, it's as simple as that. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Give it your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst way possible. Is it possible? Will she really... No, no, I'm just overthinking things. <laughs> Darn it, Kyoko, you're really going to be late like this on the first day of school? Not only is she late, she didn't tell anyone that she would be late. A most unbecoming personality trait. Come on. You're being a real jackass right now, you know that? <sighs> well, what do you want me to do? Punctuality is everything. You hear me? Now then, I declare that the first session of Host Peak Academy's briefing meetings has begun! Um... Mikoto, actually, first of all, I've talked enough. Maybe we should listen to what everyone else has to say. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> you know. Hmm, what's up? I feel like I really have become your personal assistant, don't you agree? I may not be the best assistant in the world, but I'll give it everything I've got. No, you've already done so much as my assistant. So just stand there and be pretty. I don't want to go in there. I don't think I should leave right now. The atmosphere is unpleasant. Well, frick you. Okay, fine. I don't want to talk to Sayaka right now. I want to look around. But it's, it's all pretty ordinary, isn't it? It's a TV. Right now it's just showing the school crest, even though it makes me feel uneasy. Ugh. Surveillance camera. Hate the idea that someone might be watching me. I don't even mind that it's against school regulations to mess with any of the cameras. As much as it gets on my nerves, I'd better leave it alone. Thank you. Alright, let's get the show on the road. Um, okay, so since we're in the dark about all this, let me lay down uh, let me lay out what's been going on. Everyone's split up to investigate different parts of the building, but Yakia and Kaka each went off on their own. And so did Kyoko. 
I wanted to try to find some clue as to who's responsible for improving this here. Unfortunately, I made no such discoveries. That's all for me. Really? That's it? <laughs> if I'd uncovered anything, naturally I would have had more to say. But I didn't, so I don't. R right. Understood. I spent some time looking around the dormitory and... There, I made the discovery of the century! I found that there was exactly one room for each person! Uh, well, yeah, I figured that out before everything else. Yeah. It sure already has a nameplate on it, so I guess all the rooms have been assigned already. Hmm. And each room cube is attached to the keychain with the owner's name precision etched into it. Which confirms that the room I was in earlier is, in fact, my room. And plus... And here and I found out that all the rooms are totally soundproof. Um... Your next door neighbor could, sp could scream their lungs out and you wouldn't hear a thing. <laughs> well, each room also had a private bathroom, which could also lock. Hmm. But it looked like there were only locks on the bathrooms in the girls' dorms. Hmm? But when I checked my bathroom door before, it definitely seemed like it was locked. That's weird. I should double check that later. Hey, come on! Okay, so they got a bunch of rooms ready for us. They're assuming we're gonna be here a while. Quiet down and listen! Well, better to have than have not! At least you won't have to worry about surviving like wild animals. That, that can't be all you have to re report, can it, Mr. Otter's student? Got it. That's all for my report! Let's move on to whatever's next! <laughs> um. Alright. You see? That's a tip, yeah. Looks like Leon, Hero, Junko, and, Ch Junko and Chihiro all grouped up together. Tell me about that. We went all up and down the school, double-checking the windows and all the hallways and classes. We wanted to see if we could get any of those metal plates to come off. And what happened was... Hmm. Nothing. Not a damn thing. We couldn't get a single one to budge even a little bit. What should I do? There wasn't any hope of escape anywhere. The school really has been totally cut off. This is bad. This sucks. Bad, bad, it really bad, bad, sucks. Bad. It sucks, 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 sucks! What the hell are we gonna do? Hey, come on. God damn, calm down. You're starting to make me feel nervous. All right. Um. Uh, same goes for Hina, Sakura, and Mondo. So let's Toko and Hikumi were left over, so they joined up. All right. First group. Hmm. We thought maybe we could find some way to communicate with the outside, so we weren't looking all over. Sorry. But we didn't find a thing. Sorry. Yo. I went back to the main hall, thinking maybe we could do something about that giant hunk of metal. What? But even with soccer and me both, it wouldn't budge. We hit it with desks and chairs and nothing. Yeah. It was hard as, like, metal. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Well, yes, it is metal. Oh, this sucks. Anyway, if we're gonna get out of here, it's not gonna be good there. I feel like I could just cry. But no, I have to hold it. I have to manage my hydration. So then. I shall tell you what happened next. It has nothing to do with communicating with the outside world, but it's still worth worrying about. In both the school and dorm areas, there was a set of stairs leading up to another floor. But... but there were gates there, and we couldn't find any way to open them, so we couldn't check it out. Hmm. In other words, at this point, we are only able to search the first floor. However... We can further assume that there is potentially something on the second floor as well. And if that's the case, there is at least a chance it may lead to a way out. Uh... Alright. Now, Celeste, Toko, and Hifumi. If I am being honest, I can't say we acted as one. Rather, we did nothing as one. We spent the entire time in the gym. Most unfortunate. Honestly, we are not exactly the types to go running around a school like a gaggle of junior detectives. What the hell is wrong with you? What the hell are you thinking just sitting around the gym the whole time? <laughs> well, well, it's not like any of you invited me along. Nobody said, hey, come, come with us. I blame you for leaving me out. It's your fault. If you wanted to go with someone, you should have just said something. <laughs> Forget it. Like I'd want to go anywhere with a dirty slut like you. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> your mind is as thin as your body. You make me sick to my stomach. Are you for real? I, I don't even know how to react. How can you say something so awful to someone you just met? Hey, come on. All right, guys. Everybody, just calm down, okay? All this stress is bad for your skin, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like you two are close now that you're fighting like sisters. I don't think that's what's going on, Sayaka. Hey, um... So that's what they have to say, huh? And I guess I'm the only one left. What's up? Um... 
I went then had a look around the dining hall. I found a fridge in the back of the kitchen. In the kitchen, it was overflowing with all kinds of That's stuff. Good. I guess we don't have to worry about food at least. Uh, sure. But for now, even with all that, there are 15 of us. How long can the food last? <laughs> you can just eat sesame seeds or something. Uh -huh. Huh? What am I, a parakeet? <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about it. All the food gets restocked automatically each day. Um, At least that's what Monokuma said. Mm -hmm. You saw him? Okay. Yeah, he came out of nowhere while I was checking the fridge, told me that, then disappeared again. He was so fast. I can't believe someone could have been moving him. I can't believe someone could have been moving him around with a remote control. Dad. I love a nice toy that can just appear from nowhere. I can't tell if we're supposed to be afraid or not. But, but was everything okay? He didn't like try to eat you or anything? Wait, it's silver, not lavender? Yeah, technically it would be considered sil silver. You get the lavender coloring from the shading, I think. It, like, informs our eyes. He didn't, like, try to eat you or anything? Mm -hmm. I mean, e eat her? Uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, when you say eat, what kind of eating are we talking about? Ugh, come on, man! What the hell is that? You're acting like some kind of sleazy drunk dude. Actually, Not like there's a good kind of drunk dude. Hey, hey stop screwing around, all of you! Are you still asleep or something? We're prisoners here, we could just die any second. Yeah. She's right, we can't be making stupid jokes right now. We gotta do something, or... A voice cut through the noise, interrupting Mondo. You're all spending an awful lot of time yelling and mm -hmm. carrying on. Do you really think you could... Oh. I don't know why I said that. You're all spending a lot of time uh, making a lot of noise and carrying on. You're all spending an awful lot of time yelling and carrying on. Do you really think we can afford to do so? Have none of you accepted the reality of the situation? Yo! Yoko, where the heck have you been? We've already started the meeting without you. She didn't say a word. Instead, she just dropped a piece of paper on the table. Hmm? What's this? It appears to be a map of Hope's Peak Academy. A map? What the? Where'd you find this? Well, doesn't matter where I found it. What the heck? It does matter. You're really freaking us out right now. But more important. Never mind that. What's it mean? It Just look at it. The building you're in right now is laid out in precisely the same way as Hope's Peak Academy. So what you're saying is, this really is Hope's Peak Academy? Well, in terms of construction, yes. But it looks like it's had a number of strange renovations done to it. Renovations. However, I don't know all the details yet. All I found is details about the first floor. Um, I don't know. But then, this really is Hope's Peak. We didn't get kidnapped and taken to some other place. So stupid, it's not even possible. This, this is where the country's future elite are supposed to come and learn? But if this really is Hope's Peak, where are all the other students? Hey, come on, you guys. Let's stop thinking about all this, you know, negative stuff. Oh my god, Tiro, shut up. <laughs> Gotta be honest, Tiro is not my favorite, and sometimes... Or anime. But, um... Tiro is not my favorite character. He's not my least favorite. That offer, that uh, honor belongs to Hifumi. But, come on. <laughs> Aren't you worried? But, no, but aren't you worried? Things don't look good. Yo. Worried? What's there to be worried about? I mean, this was all planned out, right? The people in charge of Hope's Peak put all this together, right? <laughs> huh. Man, if I got stressed every time something like this happened, I'd have ectoplasm shooting out of my mouth. Yo. Good things come to those who wait, right? So you just gotta chill and everything will work itself right out. <laughs> What's your problem? Why are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> I'm just happy, that is all. It seems sweating up to investigate was a good idea after all. Hmm. Haven't you been li listening? Looking around was a t total waste of time! We didn't find a way out, didn't b find who's behind this, we still have no idea what's going on! Oh. Hmm? Is it not crystal cre clear to you what is going on? Are you okay with this? It is perfectly obvious that we have been imprisoned in some secret location with no way out. None of us had any response to that. We didn't want to accept that reality, but it was staring us right in the face. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go out and say that! I was trying not to think about it! No way, way out! We're trapped here! What, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> I'm 
It's very simple. If you want to leave, you just have to kill. Don't even joke about that! Everyone just calm down, please. We need to stop and think about what to do from here. There's gotta be something we can do. All we can do is adapt. Adapt to leaving our lives here from now on. That... Live here? Are you saying we should just accept it? Do you understand? A lack of adaptability is a lack of survivability. Survival is not based on who is the strongest or the smartest. It comes down to who can adapt. Actually, as someone who has come out on top more than once, I have a suggestion. What? Huh? What do you mean? Hmm. We all understand that we are trapped here, which means we will be spending the night. However, you all remember the rule regarding nighttime, right? Nighttime is from 10 to 7. Exercise caution, some areas are off limits. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. Let's see. So regarding this nighttime, I think we need to add a rule of our own. What do you mean? <laughs> going out at nighttime should be prohibited altogether. The school regulations do not actually tell us not to go out at night. I would like to make it official. Huh? But why? Are you okay with The way me? things are now, every time night comes, we will all start to get worried and anxious. <laughs> We will all be afraid someone might try to come and kill us. What? <laughs> if we have to worry about that night after night for who knows how long, it will wear us down in no time. I see. So you're suggesting we limit our activity at night as some kind of preventative measure. Indeed. However, unlike the other rules, nobody can for be forced to comply. We all have to agree to follow it. What can we do? I see what you mean, but I think I can agree with that. It's like the little goth Alita said. Without something like that, we're just gonna self-destruct. On behalf of all the men here, I agree to comply! What? Well, hey, you can't just decide to speak for us. This is fine. So everyone is in agreement? Good. <laughs> then if you will excuse me. Uh -huh. hmm? Wait, where are you going? Let's see. It is almost night time. I want to take a shower before it arrives. I hope you are well. So, goodbye. Moving with pure elegance, Celeste left the dining hall. Her behavior seems so natural, I couldn't imagine anyone even trying to stop her. So I guess it's pretty obvious where we go from here. We're spending the night, it looks like. Hmm. Adaptability. Hmm. So, Mr. Chairman, what's next? One person already left. Um. Well then, let's say we call an end to today's meeting. Like she said, it's almost nighttime anyway. We can reconvene first thing tomorrow morning. Huh? Do we really have to stay the night here? What can we do? Look, we don't have a choice. We can't go for long without getting some sleep. This sucks. So you just have to give up. Hmm. That's all fine and good for, for today, but what do we do tomorrow? So in the end. Our only option is to split up and look around again. And let anyone know if we find anything. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Hmm. Then we're done for today? Good, I'm exhausted. With heavy movements, everyone headed off to their private rooms. Makoto, are you ready to call it a day? Yeah, let's go. Wait, no, I wanted to... Sayaka! Railroading me! Is this really where I'll be staying for the foreseeable future? Oh, that's right. I should check out the bathroom one more time before I go to bed. Only the girls' bathroom should have locks on them, right? <laughs> Looks like the door is not on the frame. I need to put it this way. <laughs> Alright, let's open it up. No use. It really is locked. <laughs> Is wrong, not locked. Holy crap! Jeez, talk about no reaction. It's like you just saw a ghost or something. Like some kind of robot bear ghost. But what are you doing here? The Kono Nobody, this is super duper majorly bad. So bad it's almost magical! Ultra magical, awful, awful attack! Uh -huh. In point of fact, I acknowledge that the bathroom door in your room has a problem with the door frame. Wait, so the reason it won't open is because isn't because it's locked? The door just doesn't fit? Didn't you see the notice? What? Can't you read? The bathrooms in the boys' rooms don't have locks. I mean, a lock on a... That's dumb. I mean, a lock on a boys' bathroom is kind of pointless, don't you think? Dumb. That's stupid. Well, it's not pointless, I guess, but I'm no expert on the boys and... on the birds and the bees and all that. Clearly you're not. Listen up! Anyway, there's a little trick to opening this particular opening door. And that's what I'm here to teach you. Okay, ready? So you just gotta turn the door knob and then lift up while you pull. Yes, indeed. Go ahead, give it a try. Turn the knob and lift up and lift the door up while I pull. When I did that, the door opened without a problem. <laughs> <laughs> See, it opened right up. Isn't that crazy though? Your door's the only one that doesn't fit quite right. 
You're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But it looks like you're not lucky at all. Bye. Anyway, I suddenly don't feel like dating anyone here anymore. Bye. <laughs> hey, wait. Damn it. Hmm. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Speaking of that dining hall, that might take a break in a little bit to get a snack. Okay then. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Looks like it's nighttime. We all promised we wouldn't leave our rooms now. All I can do now is try to get some sleep. While still mumbling to myself, I collapsed into bed. My eyes closed almost immediately. Not like that I was ready for bed exactly, I was just utterly exhausted. It was as if I'd spent an entire day staring at a TV watching movies. Or like some kind of illusion where I'd been tossed into a made-up fantastical world. Yeah, that feels about right. There's no easy way to just accept the situation we've been dropped into. So, this is how the curtain closed on my first day at, Ho at Hope Speak Academy. Soon enough, I was asleep. Would it be too much to hope that when I woke up, I'd realize it was all a dream? It's kind of lame as far as endings go, but I'd be fine with that. Actually, that'd be the best. Monokuma Theater! In any normal school, Mr. Monokuma would be a kind teacher, but when I think about what's coming up, I'm just so full of pride and joy. Our ceremony earlier today was absolutely splendid. Thank you all very much. Remember that you're all students of Hope Seek Academy and strive to refine your ideals. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Love the image of this bear drinking. Get ready to greet another beautiful day! I also love that we can see all of the rooms and the cameras. Apparently, it's morning, but thanks to the total lack of windows, there's no way to know for sure. Anyway, what should I do now? Maybe I should go find Sayaka and we can figure out where to go from here together. She did say she's my assistant now. Okay, it's decided. I'm gonna head to her room. With a newfound determination, I left my room. Alright. I think that's a good place for me to just take a second and get a snack? I'll be right back. <clears throat> this is one of these cool jams.
And that! Alright. Sorry, I was getting really hungry. Also, uh, thank you, Dylan Crossing23, for following. Gosh, how long ago did that happen? Is my. No, my alert sound is on, so I guess I just didn't hear it for some reason. But that happened a while ago. I'm sorry. Thank you for following me. <clears throat> uh, boop, boop. Sound and everything is working fine. Yeah. Let me just get this BRB message off the screen and then we can keep going. Alright, Taka, I see you there. So I will run the other way and look for other people. Not that I don't like you. I just wonder. It's so weird that you are always facing me. Nike's so short! <laughs> <laughs> He's so small. Oh my goodness, manly! <laughs> oh god, I'm stuck on Taka. You have a larger hitbox than I would think. Look at how tiny I am, <laughs> midget Nike. I'm so little. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Good morning, Makoto. Good morning. Yes, morning greetings are quite a delight. Such an energizing way to start the day. Energizing. Now then, let's make sure we will do our very best throughout the day. Sh sure. I wonder if he's always like this. Anything else to say? Alright. Can you let me in now? Yeah. Now I can freely explore. Or freely quote unquote. There's a hatch on the floor. The door won't budge. It must be locked. Leave the area? No. I can't get inside. The gate's in the way. Right. Looks like some kind of switch. Wonder what it does. One of the monitors Monokuma appears on. Right now it's just showing the school grass. I don't even want to think about when he might show up on that thing next. Surveillance camera. I hate the idea that someone might be watching me right now. I have to keep in mind. Blah blah blah. Leave the area? Yep. Uh. Go goth. Small boy. Small boy. Small oggy. <laughs> that sounds like I'm some kind of ethnic dude. Mulagi. But yeah, let's... Oh yeah, ah, uh, boop boop boop. No, they're still not telling me who's where. That makes sense. Not that. I guess it's a celestial. I don't really have anything to talk to her about right now. Well, sometimes you just want to chat with people. What was my objective? I don't remember anymore. Looks like I can't get in. Right! I need to go find everyone else. Or was it talk to Sayaka? Do you hers again? Those are on night next to mine, yeah? Yeah. There's a doorbell next to the door. I guess I should use that. Hello? Good morning, Sayaka. Hi, Makoto. Oh, Makoto, perfect timing. Um, Listen, I have a favor to ask. A favor? Um, I 
was just getting ready to head out. If that's okay, would you like to come with me? Maybe we could talk. Yeah, sure. Where are you headed? Um. Well, um, I've been thinking that there might be something around here that I could use for self-defense. Self-defense? Um. Well, I mean, whoever's keeping us here could show up and attack us at any time. You never know. Whoever trapped us here. Whoever presented us with, whoever presented us with the rules for murdering each other. Whoever put us in this insane position. She's right. You never know when they might attack. So I just want to be able to protect myself no matter what happens. A weapon to protect yourself. Well, now that I think about it, that display case in the gym entryway had a bunch of stuff. Maybe... Oh, the gym? Okay, let's go. But again? Like I said, I'm psychic. <laughs> Come on, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I just have amazing intuition. Am I really so easy to predict? Anyway, we should head to the gym. For anyone who just hates walking around the school, we've got some good news. You can now teleport using the map of the handbook. It's as simple as opening the map menu and choosing where you want to go. However, you can only teleport to hallways and, mock and mark waypoints. Plus, you can't teleport to places you haven't been or places that are blocked off. And depending on certain story moments, there will be times when you won't be able to teleport at all. Finally, try not to teleport inside any walls. There's a chance you could get lost forever. Well then, good luck and have fun. Right. Well... I don't like teleporting, I like free exploring. So thank you. But no. Oh, it'd be a good idea to check the map right now though. See where people are. Link goes in the school store. Mono and Leon are in the main hallway. And all of us are in the stairs. Makoto? If you're looking for the door to the gym, this isn't it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. Um, excuse me? Gosh, Makoto whipped much? Girl! <sighs> Women. Um... Don't go together with those other two. Quite a combination. What's your problem? What do you want? You look like you have something to say. Oh, no, I was just thinking that you three make a pretty unique team. <laughs> Let me make this perfectly cl clear. Me hanging out with two people who have muscles wh where their brain should be is not but by choice. Just a second. Wow, that was super mean. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we were complaining about how nobody invited you. That's the only reason I asked you to come with us. Mm -hmm. I never asked you to do that. S stop trying to drag me farther into your meat dimension. Mm -hmm. Jeez, I can't believe she just ran off. You think you should go after her? Wait. We shouldn't pressure her any further. Well. Oh yeah, good point. They're like water and oil anyway. It'd be weird if they did get along. Well, look who it is. What's up, guys? What are you up to? Yeah. We're picking up where we left off yesterday. I'm really hoping we find something today. If we do, I'll be sure to let everyone know ASAP. Sakura. Hmm. We have to find some way out of here, no matter what. Um. And that's why you went with Hina and Toko? However. Well, Hina's the one that invited Toko. I have trouble talking to people directly. Ah, understandable. Me too. Oh, you let me go through this door, huh, Sayaka? Something you like on the other side? That's rude, man. Don't say that anymore. Protect Aoi. Aoi and Sakura, best couple. Agreed! Aoi and Sakura, OTP. <laughs> Mondo? What are you doing? What? Trying to find a way out. Figured I'd give it another shot. Did my camera stop working? Oh, come on now. There we go. Says my glasses slipped down my face. Figured I'd give it another shot. There's gotta be a way to bust this thing open. Hell yeah. 
but I suck at thinking stuff up, so I guess I'll let you guys figure it out. Hey, damn it. Once it's time to act, though, you just let me know. I'll show you what a weirdo man can do. Wow, sounds like we can really count on you. No apology for punching me in the face? I mean, seriously? Man, what the hell is with this metal hatch thing? It's really on there, that's for damn sure. Anyway, there's nothing to do around here. I'm gonna freaking die of boredom. Uh, Being stuck in here is keeping me from racing toward my dream, too. Hey, um, Your dream? Yeah! Yeah, to become a midget? To become a musician! You can sense my aura, right? The strongest vocals of the century right here. How cool is that? God, I feel so cool getting to say that from a national celebrity. Dreams. Did you say something? <laughs> oh, sorry, it's nothing. Come on, let's go. Alright, where to, Sayaka? Oh yeah, right, the gym. Let's look in here again. Some kind of mailbox, nothing inside. But there was money inside, Nagi, you liar. Yeah, it's definitely a gun now. You can sell that for sure. You already checked out this room, but... Figured I'd give it another once over now that we have more information. See if there's money. The entrance is being blocked by a huge slab of metal. Allie and Sakura got a couple. Can we go in? Hiya! Hey there, Makoto. Oh, is it just the two of you right now? Are you on a date? What? Come on. Damn, Makoto. I never would have guessed, but you're a total player, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. It's nothing like that. I'm his assistant. To be dismissed like just like that is somehow, huh? His assistant? Is that like some kind of new roleplay thing? Sorry. Well, whatever. Whatever you're into is your business. I don't judge. Anyway, if you don't mind. Let's head to the gym already. Yeah, let's go. What's this? Hmm, maybe if I turn the knob, a prize will come out. Would you like to try your hands? Give it a shot. Alright, let's try. What do you mean? I have a few coins. Alright. Use the mouse wheel to add or remove coins. Right. I'll add one. Got an item! Let's see. Time to leave. There we go. I should probably keep going. Yeah, let's not get addicted to gambling just yet, Maggie. Vending machine. I guess it's supposed to be the school store then. This is one of the moniker monikers. Monitors Monokuma appears on. Yep, definitely the school store. But it has kind of a Japanese western blend. Seems a lot like a cluttered antique store. Yeah. Agreed. place. Friend zone. <laughs> At distant zone. Here, Sayaka, will you get off my back now? Hmm? Hmm? Will ya? Will ya? Alright, let's talk to her first. Okay, I guess not. A plaque. I guess it's to commemorate some kind of championship. The helmet of some sort. 
Why is something like that on display? I never noticed how evil the sun looks up here. Alright. Hanafuda. Not Hanafuda. Terrapata play figures. What are they called? Haniwa? They don't look like the kind of thing you put in a high school gym. It's a gold statue of Buddha. Why is something like that on display? Is this a sword? Oh no, I think it's just a replica. Still, it's pretty impressive. It's covered in gold coating, but... Geez, I barely touched it and I got that gold stuff all over my hands. Wow, you're right. Your hands are totally gold. Even just for self-defense, I think that's a little... Well, it's still better than nothing, I guess. You should take it with you. It might help liven up your room a little. Think so? But I guess you'd, be you'd better be careful taking it back. You should wrap it in a newspaper or something. Just like that, and decide it. I don't see anything I could really use for self-defense. Hey, don't worry about it. It's not like you need it right away, right? Plus, if anything were to happen, when the time comes, I'll protect you. You'll protect me? Thank you for saying that. If I've got you on my side, I guess I don't need a weapon after all. Saika giggled as she said that. That mysterious smile. I can tell it comes from the heart. Makes me feel at ease. When I look at her, I honestly feel like I can do anything. <laughs> Okay, we can stop looking for a weapon then, but as long as we're here, let's hang out a bit more. I wanna look again. There's all kinds of stuff on the shelves up above. Yeah, there are, Nike. Why don't you make a comment on them? That's definitely not why I opened the screen. to talk to you, but now that we're here, I don't really know what to talk about. Sorry. And I was the one who invited you to come with me, too. Sorry. Okay. I mean, if there's nothing to talk about, then we can just not talk, right? Huh? Hmm? You don't have to force yourself to talk. We can just, I don't know, stare off into space or whatever. Stare off into space. Oh, but you're probably super bored just standing around doing nothing. Um. No, it's not that it's boring. It's just... I... I've never really done it before. I don't have a lot of time to just do nothing. I, I guess that makes sense. You're not a normal high school student like me. You got tons of stuff to do every day. Um, working. Um, this is kinda out of nowhere, but... Makoto, do you have a dream? <laughs> well, what about you, Sayaka? What's your dream? I'd love to hear. I... My dream is... I've always wanted to be a star, as long as I can remember. I grew up without a mother, you know? And my dad worked really late every night. I was always home alone. I was just a kid, you know, so it was really lonely. But I'll, that all changed when I saw a pop star on TV for the first time. She was so pretty, like a princess, and she could sing and dance. But more than anything else, there was her smile. Looking at her smile, I could feel my loneliness melting away. I decided that's what I wanted to be someday. I wanted to give that kind of encouragement to others. <laughs> Eventually, that became my dream. That's so amazing, though. You were able to actually fulfill your lifelong dream. Honestly, it's really incredible. I... I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it. Even some things that weren't so pleasant. Hmm? You see. I honestly believe that as long as you kept chasing your dreams, someday they had to come true. But to do that, you can't take your eyes off your dream, not even for a second. Even if sometimes it's a bad dream, whether you're awake, whether you're asleep, to make your dream a reality, you have to keep your gaze fixed on it no matter what. Um... In that world, if you lose focus for even a split second, you get left behind. You have to keep on swimming against the current without even taking time to breathe. That's the kind of world my dream lives in. I is it really that tough? Is it not fun at all? Oh no! Oh no, don't get the wrong idea. It's super fun. But... But that's exactly what scares me. Huh? Uh, um... I enjoy every single day I wake up and get to do what I do. Everyone in our group is amazing. We're rivals in a way, but they all mean so much to me. We've been performing together since we were really young, so they're like family to me. Without them, I would have given up on my dream a long time ago. To work together and fulfill our dream together it's bought me so much happiness. But that's why... But that's the thing that scares me the most. If this world gets tired of us, then what happens? What happens to us? When the dream dies, those wonderful days come to an end and everyone goes their separate ways. Sayaka. 
She's trembling. She must be terrified. She worked so hard, sacrificed so much to get to where she is. She must be terrified of losing it. You see? So that's the reason I decided to come to Hope's Peak. Hmm? What do you mean? Um... Well, they say that if you graduate from here, success is basically guaranteed. Which means I can keep on performing with my best friends forever and ever. At least that's what I thought. I really did believe that, but now we're trapped here with no way out. They're probably waiting for me. While I'm here, while I'm in here, the world out there is forgetting about me. Minute by minute, we're all disappearing. But still, Sayaka, I can't afford to be stuck in here. That was the first time I heard her cry out from deep within herself. She sounds desperate. But I can understand why she'd feel that way. Trapped here this way, the dream she put so much effort into is in the verge of disappearing forever. And that isn't something that can be fixed with a few kind words. The way she's carrying, I can't even imagine it. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to complain. Uh, um... Trying to kill the mood, huh? No, not at all. Sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, Sayaka? Actually, are you hungry? Before we head back, why don't we go to the dining hall and get some food? So... Okay! You want me to make us something to eat? I might not look like it, but I'm actually a pretty good cook. Wow, really? What's your specialty? Chili oil. You mean the condiments? <laughs> Just kidding. She bursts out laughing. Her earlier mood disappeared, replaced by the bright smile I'd quickly grow used to. But how'd it happen so fast? It was almost like a mask. Some kind of mutual expression. Anyway, we headed to the dining hall to get something to eat, before returning to our rooms. Man, this game does a lot of strong arming at first. The only thing left in my room is a fake sword covered in gold. Well, it doesn't make me feel that much more uncomfortable. I don't know if strong arming is the right word, but like, I would like to explore a little bit. <laughs> I know it's not necessary, playing it before and all, but still. Anyway, there's still plenty of time left of the day. I really don't feel like just sitting here. Maybe I'll take a look around. We're about to have our first experience with free time. Would you like to hear more? Uh, I've done it, but I did say I wanted to be beginner friendly, so let's do this. <laughs> As you live out your school life here, you'll be given free time at certain points. During your free time, you can spend your fellow you can spend time with your fellow classmates and deepen your friendships. You can also give them presents, which can potentially give, potentially give them an even better impression of you. You can get them from the Mono Mono machine in the school store. Come by early and often. At certain points, a witness intimate events and new info will be added to each person's report card. These events can also open up new skills, which will prove useful as everything plays out. We strongly encourage you to develop and deepen as many friendships as you can. Keep in mind that when you talk with a classmate, time will pass. When you're finished, you will automatically return to your room. After a certain amount of time passes, your free time will come to an end and the story will progress. If you'd prefer not to engage, you can always choose to simply go to sleep and skip it. We wouldn't recommend this approach, but if you absolutely must press forward with the story, then... Anyway, why don't you try it out by spending some time with Miss Sayaka Maizono? She's the ideal partner to begin with, don't you think? I would have preferred spending it with someone else, since I've been spending so much of my time with Maizono. But, if you insist... The only thing in my room is a fake sword covered in gold. Well, it doesn't make me feel that much more uncomfortable. Right. Leave the area? Yeah. Sayaka worse, snacks and forces you to go places than assistant zones you. <laughs> I guess she pressed the door though. Honestly, Sayaka's the worst in general. I don't like her. I mean, I do like her, but like, she's annoying. <laughs> I don't like being forced to go anywhere, Sayaka. You can't just make me do what you want. Nike might be whipped, but I'm not. Um, listen. You know, Makoto, I'm so anxious. I really am afraid. Should I talk to her for a while? I don't have a present for her. Okay, first... Let's go to the Mono Mono machine and see if we can pick up a present for her. Hi, Joko. I also do some exploring, find some coins, you know, the deal. You know the deal. 
The drill? You know the drill. No, I'm not talking to any of the people in here. Another surveillance camera. Yeah, there's not much here. DVD player, but I don't see any actual discs nearby. The DVD player is useless by itself. Well, if we had something to watch, at least that would help pass the time. Yeah. With all that said, not much in here, huh? Alright, bye, Leon. out with Jinko, the cool one. I would, but they told me to hang out. Well, act can I hang out with- I've never tried before. I wonder if I can hang out with other people instead. Alright, let's give it three tries. How to do the thing. Let's see, what other present did I get? Rose hip tea. An herbal tea said to promote beauty and wellness. You can somehow sense its essential elegance. That's not gonna do for Jinko. One more time. One more time. I'm not addicted or anything. Donuts! These are good for Allie. Maybe I should hang out with her instead. You want to do one more? Would do for God. Yeah, let's go hang out with Allie. Let's find her. Uh, I keep pressing escape instead of F1. Let's see where she is. Where's Allie? Um, where is Allie? Uh... Weird. Alright, in the gym, maybe? Just had to have it, given my own investigation of the gym ago. In this flavor. Might as well. Now, of course, not here. There are balls all over the floor, though. Nothing to observe? Okay, camera. Nah. That's all, for real? Lame. Alright, later. Okay, maybe the dining hall, then. Oh, I got to surprise me, Biakia. Main hall. Ow, I hit myself in the face. It threw me. My nemesis. Hi again, Junko. Oh, 
Celeste's here. But if we can't find Allie, we have someone to hang out with. There you are! Um, hey, did you find your way out of here? I didn't find a thing. Oh, wait, oh, hey, did you find a way out of here? I didn't find a thing. Nothing. Zippo. Silch. Lost all my motivation. You're not gonna let me hang out with you, huh? How do we get out of here? There's gotta be an exit somewhere. Alright. Colorful vegetables have been stuck in a huge pile. There's some kitchen knives hanging on the wall. There's a whole bunch of different kinds. I had no idea you had you needed so many cook you needed so many to cook. Goodness. It's a deli style display case. There's all kinds of food and stuff lined up inside. Alright, since I can't hang out with you guys, I guess I'll go back to being railroaded like the whipped little boy I am. Yeah. Fitting, because I don't have a gift for her or anything. It's almost like I didn't want to hang out with her. Alright, Zach, I'm back again. Um, are you going to try and cheer me up? Unfortunately. Sorry for making you take time out of your day like this. You better be. That was my free time. I did my best to comfort Sayaka. Sayaka and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give her a present? I don't have anything. Um, um Lakota? Do you think you can make time for the two of us to talk? What's wrong? Why are you being so formal? I... Well, it's just... I guess that was kind of formal, but... It's just because I know I can count on you. Hmm? Having you by my side really makes me feel a lot better. Uh, um, if you weren't here with me, I don't know what I'd do. I'd be lost. But that's why. I hate that we had to meet again under such awful conditions, but I'm relieved you're with me. Sayaka. Standing here face to face and hearing her say that. Nice, but kind of embarrassing at the same time. I know how you feel. You being here is what saved me. <sighs> really? <laughs> Thank you for the flattery. That smile. A mysterious smile that softens my heart. I really wasn't flattering her. That smile saved me. Hmm. But it's kind of strange, you know? I never thought I'd get a chance to really talk to you like this. All through middle school, you never talked to me. In fact, you never even looked at me. Because you were like a celebrity, I couldn't just go around staring at you. Wait, how do you know I never looked at you? Hey, um... Because I looked at you all the time. Huh? I was always looking for an opportunity to talk to you. You wanted to... You wanted to talk to me? But... But since I always had so many people around me, we ended up graduating without saying a word. That was one of my biggest regrets. But why me? Um... Do you remember during our first year of junior high, that huge bird wandered into the school pond? Actually, now that I think about it, I do sort of remember something like that. Hmm. It was like something out of a fairy tale. The turtle once every million years, that bird once every thousand. A huge bird wandered into the school pond during our first year of junior high. I think it might have been... A crane, sparrow, or heron. Gosh, I don't remember what the right answer was. Uh, I mean... All of these have magical or mystical connotations. I might just choose a crane, be traditional. Oh, okay, yes, they all are kind of traditional. Thoughts chat before I pick. Let's wait. Hmm. I think I'll go with 
Oh, you want to go with Heron? Hmm. Alright, I have no qualms. Sure. It was a uh, Heron, wasn't it? Oh, no! No, not quite. It was similar, but even bigger than that. Like a Heron, but bigger? That'd have to be... A crane. I'm so smart. It was a crane! It just walked right into the pond. Okay. That's right, that's what it was. It was so big, the teacher had no idea what to do. <laughs> but he led it into the forest behind the school. He helped it find its way out. But only because I was already in charge of taking care of the animals at school. They made me do it. You see. I should have said thank you then, but is it okay if I do it now? Thank me for doing my job? I... I'm that crane, you see. I've come to return the favor. Here, let me make you a cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I kind of figured. But... Honestly, though, I was so impressed. That's why I always wanted to talk to you, even just once. Uh, um... I never imagined this would be how I got my chance. Yeah, if we'd met again at a train station somewhere downtown, that'd make for a nice dramatic reunion. But instead, it's this weird school. I would say this is still pretty dramatic, Nagy. I... Maybe, but still. I'm sure you'll help me find my way out, just like that crane. You'll save me. You see? It's just intuition, I know, but I still believe it. I'm going to save her? I'll do my best, I promise that. I'll make sure it's more than just intuition. If there's anything I can do, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I believe in you. Besides, my intuition always turns out to be right. Like I said, I'm psychic. Because I'm psychic. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. She laughed out loud as she said it. The closer we get, the stronger that smile of hers makes me. And I was glad to feel that, feel that way. Her report heart has been updated based on our experience. You just unlocked the skill of Melodious Voice. Give yourself a pat on the back. You earned it. Once we were all done, I headed back to my room for a little while. It's nighttime? <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. <sighs> As such, it is officially night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Yes, okay, yes, then. Monokuma. Sweet dreams. Today's already come to an end. But I swear, tomorrow I'm going to find some kind of clue. I swear. Yeah, you want to just hang out with Sayaka all day? As my eyelids began to slide close, the conversation I'd had with Sayaka that morning began to replay. In a way, it's almost frustrating. Even if I understand where her desperation is coming from, I can't share in it. The pressure she's under is way different from anything a normal high schooler like me goes through. She didn't just stumble into the school the way I did. So I can't say I feel things the way she does. Compared to her, no, compared to everyone else here, there's no doubt I just don't match up. I guess that might explain my own frustration. Monokuma Theater! Ahem! So, I'm sure you've noticed the killing game has begun, but... There's still room for a little laughter! It seems our new students already so filled with despair, still have some hopes of escape! <laughs> so, when will it begin? When will their hope begin to die? Is it time yet? Is it time? Another beautiful day. Morning has come. What should I do? Oh, can I spend my time with someone else? Alright, let's get into the hallway. See who's waiting for us there and then decide what to do next. Anyone waiting in the halls? No? Okay, we'll check them out. Mm -hmm. Seems like Allie is the popular vote for the first uh, friendship we make. We can do that. Alright, she's just at the stairs. Maybe we can spend our second day of free time with, uh, with Jihiro. 
Okay, I like them. Oh my goodness, the camera makes us even shorter than Chihiro! <laughs> oh my god. Nike walks around, like, in a squat to appear less threatening. Howie, where are you? You're supposed to be. Are you down here? You're supposed to just be at the stairs, son, so where are you? You can't be in the gym. Yeah, you're not in the gym entry, like. <clears throat> Owie dear. If you were in the store, to tell us. There you are. Oh, I guess I just passed you, huh? Hmm. Pushing on him doesn't help, smacking him doesn't help. What the heck is up with those things? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm talking about the metal plates covering all the windows. Ah. I know, we should try grabbing the top and yanking down on it. Should I talk to Hina for a while? Yes. You got it. You want to do some stretches with me? I followed Hina's lead and did some elaborate stretching. Hina and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give her a present? Yes. What would you like to give her? Uh, how far down are they gonna- There they are, flotation donut. A gigantic donut that doubles as a flotation device, and naturally you can snack on it while floating out to sea. Comes in a variety of styles. What? I can keep this, right? Right? Yay! Ultra stoked! Seeing Nina so pleased with something I gave her, I gave her makes me happy. Oh man, oh man. What's up? Okay. I'm getting totally fired up. What? How come? <laughs> How come does it matter? Now that I'm rubbed up, I need to get it out. Let's race. I, I don't think that's a good idea. I wouldn't stand a chance anyway. Right. Really? Well, I don't mind a solo run. Well, hold on. You always seem so excited, you know? Hmm? Hey, are you making fun of me? No, I'm just impressed. Hmm. Really? I used to know this one guy who was always like, Hina, you're like a super spaz. Super spaz? Yeah! Yeah, like he'd see me wearing shorts in winter and he'd say stuff like that. But if he loses the cold like that, it just means you weren't dedicated enough. Wow, you did stuff like that and then you get sick? Wrong. Getting sick is for the week! If you're really dedicated, winter means even lighter clothes. It's all part of your training. Training, huh? Hmm. So, like, are you the type who gets sick easily? Actually, yeah. Aww. See, you're soft. You need more training. Okay. Okay, I've got the perfect remedy to keep someone like you as fit as a fiddle. Hmm, what kind of remedy? Yeah. Actually, I do this myself every morning. You just strip down to your waist, then take a dry towel and start rubbing down your bare skin. I call it. I call it a. Huh? What do I call it again? <clears throat> a way to keep healthy by stripping down and rubbing a towel across your skin. Let's take a shot at this. Towel treatment. Is it something like towel treatment? You got it! Oh my god! Yeah, that's it! I love going out on my apartment balcony, stripping down, feeling the wind on my skin. God, it feels so amazing. I never let a morning pass without getting in a good rub down. Wait, so you went out on your balcony and stripped down? Are you, And you were okay with that? <laughs> you should give it a try. If you haven't got your health, you haven't got anything. I hate to see you catch a cold or something. Her report card has been updated. Our maximum number of skill points has increased. Look at us go. After being introduced to a unique sickness prevention method, I went back to my room. <clears throat> Is there enough days to max a character's friendship? Yeah, but you gotta focus. Um... <clears throat> And certain characters, you know, you're just unable to max. Uh, we have tea. Why don't we go hang out with Celeste next? Oh, so let's check the report card while we have stuff. Got something for Sayaka. Okay. 
in one you have to do it 12 times. I don't know about that. Well? Mm, I mean, we could also just do the school mode. But, yeah, it's a bit harder to max out characters in this one. I only gets 12 times. It also just varies by character sometimes. Compared to two, yeah, I know that in two you have to do a five. You can just do an even five. Oh, well, not even five, but you know what I mean. An easy five. Hmm. So you're thinking I should just focus on Hina and do their others in school mode? Hi Saika, I see you standing there. No. Only Owie. <laughs> hmm, I feel like I might be sensing a little bit of favoritism, but I'm not sure. I just have a little bit of an inkling of favoritism. No. <laughs> Are you sure? I don't know, Celeste is right there and we do have tea. But we'll try our luck on the gacha a little bit more. I don't think you have to have presents in one, but... Nice. Of course, I'm always gonna get an item, but you know what I mean. Aw, oh, dang it, doubles. of coins for now. Why not? Bracelet. Lucky! Flashlight. And a doll. Alright, none of these really look like things you know will like, but let's look through just to make sure. No, of course you're not into the peppy sporty girl. Why would I ever think that? Black croissants? Baked good made from black ingredients. It looks burnt, but it's actually pretty good. A handcrafted item made with needle and thread. They say that once you put it on, it'll never come off again. Everlast everlasting bracelet. It looks like something for Hogwarts Ray. Cheers. Since Hope's Peak doesn't have a barber, the students are responsible for cutting their own hair. Quality chinchilla cover. A dark red seat cover. Its refined design is intended for only the most elite clientele. The Delhi Dap Store. Oops. 
antique doll, a porcelain doll. Due to the exquisite craftsmanship of the doll and its clothing, many people still collect and prize them to this very day. Small light. Common wisdom might make you think that shining this light on you will turn you small, but nope. It says that the light itself is about the size of a matchbox. Chin drill. A fashion accessory that allows you to clip a gel on your chin. It's said to re represent the idea of spiral energy! <laughs> yeah, it looks like the game is definitely pulling me to your, uh, towards the left. RNG says that RNG prefers the Celeste, it seems. So I might just go friend her. Why not? I do like her. Hi. I have things for you. Most unfortunate. Does the school not have a dry cleaning service? How terribly upsetting. What am I supposed to do if my if my if my clothes become soiled? Hmm, should I hang out with her? Yeah. There is nothing to be done. Normally, my pride would not permit me to allow you to be alone with me, but fine, I will allow you to entertain me for a while. I killed some time with Celeste. And we grew a little closer. Would you like to give her a present? Absolutely. Well, let's start with the tea. So I can have this? I may have to revise my initial impression of you. <laughs> the more wonderful things I receive from you, the better impression I get. Being Celeste so pleased with something I gave her makes me happy. Makoto, I would like to share something with you. Hmm? What is it? My perfect gambling strategy. Is there really such a thing? Mm -hmm. Of course there is. Are you ready? Please pay attention. Whatever the game, you must have a mind for strategy. This will allow you to increase your odds of winning. However, the exciting part about gambling is that there is a power which can overwhelm any strategy. There is... That power is... Luck. Luck. Really? There are only two types of luck, good and bad. There is no in-between. And that luck is built into every human at the moment of conception, like a computer program. Is that okay? Some call it fate. The bottom line is, luck is life. Well... Do you see what I am saying? You mean, that's your perfect strategy? <laughs> Correct. You see, I was programmed to have good luck when it comes to gambling. That is why I have never lost. That's all there is to it? <laughs> you are the ultimate lucky student, yes? Does this perhaps exceed my own luck? One day, I hope to put that to the test. I hope you are well. Mm-hmm. Well then, have a nice day. Without another word, Celeste quietly disappeared. I'd say my life's been more bad luck than good luck lately. Gambling's probably not a great idea for me. Oh, my lana machine. Her report card has been updated based on our experience with her. We have more skill points now. After parting ways with Celeste, we went back to our room. Alright, and now it's night time. Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. Right. As such, it's soon the doors to the dining hall. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> taking a drink, taking a drink. Check in the stream, check in the stream. Come on. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, big gambling god, yeah. The third day here has already come to an end. When will I... No, we. When are we gonna get out of here? I laid on my bed and stared blankly at the ceiling. And before I knew it, I'd fallen into an uneasy sleep. Theater. I need an immediate fast 
acting pick me up. If it doesn't act now, it's the same as giving in to regret. What do you think dies in the world? Speed, of course. That's why Formula One drivers are so popular. Any idiot can accomplish something if they take it slow. Even a human piece of excrement could create a masterpiece if they spent their entire life on it. Someone who does things in a timely fashion is both wise and admirable. Straight is better than a curve or an angle. Freestyle is better than a backstroke or a breaststroke. Drive-through is better than sit-down. A Sunday comic artist is smarter than a graphic novelist. What I'm saying is, speed is the gold standard of the standard this world. Why I said I need that pick me up. Meanwhile, zero point. So many point. So many two seconds later. All right. Getting the hang of this, Nike. Good morning, everyone. Get ready. Be another beautiful day. I woke up to the irritating sound of Monokuma's voice. I slowly pulled myself out of bed. Ugh. Another night of restless sleep. Day after day, I can feel the fatigue piling up. As soon as the thought had crossed my mind, the sound of the doorbell forced its way into my room. Hey. A fantastic morning, isn't it? Taka? Hmm. Now then, if you'll pardon the interruption, without waiting for a reply, Taka barged into my room. What's up, Taka? No matter how intensely the stormy seas may batter me, I will not fall asleep as long as my I will not fall as long as my feet are firmly planted. You agree, right? Um, I'm not sure I understand. And if you can't do it alone, just find someone to support you, and you can support them back. That's how you can overcome any storm. I was thinking about it last night, and I decided we all need to really come together. And that was when I realized. Every morning from now on, after the morning announcement, everyone should have breakfast together. And, and now is the beginning of that fateful day. Please head to the dining hall at your earliest convenience. That's all for now. I have to go let everyone else know the good news. Taka didn't even wait for a reply. He turned and left before I could say anything. Well, I guess I'd better head to the dining hall. Hi, Toko. Leon. Hey, man. Hmm. Ugh, so freaking tired. What hell's wrong with that guy? Did he wake you up too? Yeah, he sure did. I guess he's going around waking up everyone. You know what I mean? Seriously annoying. <laughs> I'm going back to bed. If anyone needs me, I'll be in my room. I don't think it'll do any good. She'll just come bug you again. Give me a break. Yeah, probably. Damn it. Guess we better just go then. And that's that. No one hiding in the corner. Actually, why don't I speed down this hall for a sec? Ha! I knew I'd find you. Makoto, can't you any, can't any of you guys get a freaking clue? Hmm? My mascara is totally clumpy. I don't want anyone to see me this way, but Taka came and woke me up. What a dick. You look just the same as yesterday to me. As if it's like night and day. Sorry. Aww. I seriously need to reapply, but there's nothing I can do about it right now. Maybe I'll go see if Celeste can hook me up. And that's that. We've been in prison here, and that's what she's worried about right now. Oh well, yeah, I mean, wouldn't you be worried too? You've been in prison here and you don't even look your best. <clears throat> um, Toko? What's your problem? What? Oh, I was just wondering what you were doing here. You should probably head to the dining hall, right? I, I, I know, I just need to prepare myself mentally. Prepare herself? What's she talking about? Uh, I'm so nervous. What's she so nervous about? Hello, everybody. Alright, Kaka. First, Kyoko, what's your thoughts on this? Hey, 
Paco looks pretty impatient. You better get this started already. You know, out of everyone to use his, like, nickname, Kyoko, you wouldn't expect you to be the one. Dude. Kyoko has, like, called everyone by their first names and first name only vibes. Hey, bestie. <laughs> Breakfast meeting, eh? Perhaps it will keep me entertained and make life with everyone here a bit more bearable. Um... Good morning. Good morning, Tahiro. <laughs> it's nice to get to eat with everyone. With so many people, it's actually kind of fun. Hey, Makoto! Good morning, Makoto! Morning. <laughs> breakfast time! Breakfast time! Gotta eat big, a big breakfast at breakfast time! Doctor, I thought. Good morning. Good, good morning. <laughs> to bring everyone together for a breakfast meeting is a very Kaka esque suggestion. Yeah. Alright. I don't want to talk to anyone else. Listen to me. Okay, looks like everyone's here. So then, let's begin our very first breakfast meeting. Quiet down and listen. Everyone, thank you for making time in your busy schedules to come together. For shit to drag me here. I know I already mentioned this earlier, but in order to get out of here, it's essential that we all cooperate with each other. And the first step is this breakfast meeting to allow us to become friends and build trust. So from now on, let's all meet here in the dining hall every morning after the school after the morning announcement. Now then, let's eat. Okay. You don't want me to eat breakfast with other people? I've never done that but before. I'm not so sure. I mean, seriously? Yeah. It's been a while for me too. But more important. Well, anyway, did anyone th here come up with a, any? Eh. Well, anyway, did anyone happen to come up with any clues? Silence echoed throughout the dining hall. Seriously? Seriously? Nothing at all. Hey. Anything? It can be about how to get out or who's doing this. Nobody's found anything. Are you okay with this? You're going to die. Huh? Huh? Do you understand? If you can't stop yourself from showing weakness in front of others, you will die. Stop it! What the hell? Don't even joke about that! I am not joking. Adaptability is survivability. Did I not say so? So you better hurry up and adapt to your new life here. What the hell is this? Have you gone completely insane? Adapt to my new life here? Do you have any idea what you're saying? What? Yeah, sounds like the girl wants to live here in hell. More power to her. Shit. No way in hell am I living here. I'm getting out of here. I don't give a sh- Mondo. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Sure. Feel free. Uh... Okay, so nobody has any clues? What the heck? One thing I can tell you is who's behind all this. Someone who's totally weird and messed up. Why else would we be trapped here in the first place? Hey, listen. Well, sure, it could be something like that, but for right now, actual clues are... Uh, um... Uh, um... Huh. What's um... up? Do you think in terms of people who are really abnormal or bizarre? Do you think maybe the person responsible for all this could be a certain murderous fiend? <laughs> a murderous fiend? Chihiro, do you have some idea about who might be behind all this? Mm, well, maybe. I mean, I can't really be certain, but... Stop. Certainty is not a concern right now. I'll allow whatever remarks you may have. You know? O okay, well... Have you guys heard of Genocide Jack? I wonder why they changed it to Jack and not, sh and not kept it as show. You mean that serial killer that's been in the news and all over the internet? The mysterious villain- uh, the mysterious villain has murdered scores of victims in brutally bizarre fashion. The word bloodlust was left at each murder scene written in the victim's own blood. Whoever it is, he's like a ghost. He strikes without warning and disappears without a trace. Now on the internet, they started calling him Genocide Jack. That about covers it, I think. They say he's claimed over a thousand- uh, they say he's claimed over a thousand victims. This is an urban legend though, right? I mean, even like 10 people would be totally insane. Mm. Anyway, whoever Genocide Jack is, he's obviously some kind of super crazy killer. Huh? And if he's really this ultimate- <clears throat> And if he's really this ultimate psycho, I wouldn't be surprised if he put together something like this. But like I said, I can't be certain. I don't have any evidence or anything, it's just a thought. Hey, hold on. But if there's a killer, isn't that like a killer of a problem for us? Yeah. It's okay. Everything's absolutely positively 100% without a doubt gonna be okay. Help's gonna be here soon. I'm sure of it. Huh? Uh, help? Cause I mean, you've been stuck in here a few days already, right? 
Nobody's been able to contact us, so I'm sure they're getting worried. I bet they called the police already. What's this? The police? You're putting your faith in the police? What are you doing here? You guys. <clears throat> you guys, seriously. Do you understand what role the police exists to fill? Uh, all they're good for is being a foil, playing against a villain or anti-hero or evil organization. The bad guys come along and destroy them, and that shows just how badass they really are. Are you sure you, you want uh, are you sure you want to rely on such an unreliable group of losers? I mean, come on, if you really, really want to get out of here, all you gotta do is kill. <clears throat> Why the hell are you laughing? I'm just impressed with the total commitment to this whole act. Come on. You're still going on about that? You're fucking dead. Mm-mm. Go, -mm. oh, Mr. Serial Killer Psycho Freak Bastard. What the hell do you want? Huh? Mr. Serial Killer Psycho Freak Bastard, huh? That's a pretty long name. German, maybe? Hey, come on. We know who you really are. Maybe if I ignore him, he'll just go away. You son of a bitch. Hey, don't ignore me, asshole. Okay, okay, let's get back to business. Your life here has already begun and a couple days have gone by and nobody's killing anybody. I thought all your kids were crazy and selfish and here you are working together, but I'm totally bored. There's nothing you can say that'll make us start killing each other. Wait, I think... Yes! Ding, ding, ding! I figured it out. In other words... All the misty ingredients are here. Right people, right place. So why hasn't anyone killed anyone yet? That's why I couldn't understand, but I just realized there's one very important piece missing. What, what are you? If you want to know, I'll tell ya. It's a motive. It's so, so, it's so simple. I just have to give everyone a motive. Stop fucking around. Motive? What the fuck are you talking about? Mondo, <laughs> I don't like cursing so much. Yeah. Hey, um... <clears throat> oh, by the way, there's something I want to show you guys. You son of a bitch. Stop changing the goddamn subject! Hmm. I have a little video I'd like you all to see. Hmm. Oh, but don't worry, it's not some pervy Excel's video or anything. Seriously, it's nothing like that. It's a special video for you to be showing what's going on outside the school. Outside the school? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, Master's so impatient today. Why don't you just watch it and find out? Hmm. Here in school, there's a specific place you can watch that you can go to that has everything you need to watch the video. Good, then we can go watch the video right now. But before we do that, I'd like to know. What are you? Why would you do something like this? What do you want from us? What do I want from you? Well, if you must know. That's all. Well now. If you want to know more than that, you'll have to figure it out for yourself. Do whatever you need to uncover the mystery hidden within this school. I won't try and stop you. <laughs> Just to be honest, it's entertaining as heck watching you guys search so desperately for answers. <laughs> so I guess I want amusement from you too! Um, he's gone. Once again, he left before we could find out anything useful. Is that right? Really? I think we learned something very useful. He has no intention of standing in our way of our pursuit of the truth. Interesting. However... Perhaps, but what about the video he mentioned? I'm very curious to see what's on it. That's true. Same here. Okay, so... Mondo started glancing around the dining hall. But when his gaze landed on me, he stopped. Hell yeah! Hey Makoto, check this out for us, would ya? Hmm, why me? Yo. Cause you're the closest to the door, that's the rule, right? R rule? Jesus Christ. Hey, hey! Hey, 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 hey! Hey! Stop fucking around! <clears throat> you see how passionately I'm begging you? What's the big deal? Just check it out real quick! Oh, okay, I guess I'll get going then. Hell yeah! Awesome, thanks. I owe you one. Hey, um... If Makoto's going, I'm going with him. It's not safe to walk around this place alone. Yo. Yeah, sure thing. Then we're counting on the both of you. If anything happens, just yell and I'll come running. Mondo, watch your language. <laughs> I can't decide if Mondo is totally dependable or completely terrible. Yeah, I wish he'd watch his language. <laughs> I might freeze a little bit, but even I have a limit. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. I'm just a soft baby at heart. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say he's kind of both. He's not exactly a bad person. 
but I definitely can't say he's a good person either. It's almost like people come in shades of gray. Who knew? So then, where's this specific place Monokuma mentioned? Must be somewhere you can watch DVDs, but... It was a place set up to watch DVDs, then. Audio visual. Wrong way. Scoot around the corner. Next to the monitor is a high-end DVD player. It should be able to play DVDs. But I don't see any actual discs nearby. Box. Hmm? There's something inside this cardboard box. It's... A bunch of DVDs! And each one has a label on it with someone's name. This must be the video for each of us you mentioned. Hold on a second. I better go tell everyone! She just ran off. I didn't follow after her, I just stood right there where I was. The DVDs in front of me had robbed me of all of Lurness. I was rooted in place. I think I see something. You know... You know, my Zono. Maybe it wasn't... Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Just telling everyone right away. Next to the monitor is a high-end DVD player. It'll probably play these DVDs no problem. Maybe I'll just watch mine real quick before everyone else gets here. I sorted through the DVDs I found in the box and found the one with my name on it. Then I slid it into an expensive looking player. I sat down and stared intently at the darkened screen and then... <laughs> Komaru, you look so different! <laughs> I yelled out without realizing it, and my heart started racing. Because what I saw on that monitor, it was my family. You getting picked to attend Hope's Peak Academy is like a dream come true. Make sure you do your best. I'm so proud of you, son. But remember, don't push yourself too hard. Are you really watching this, Makoto? Good luck, okay? If it had ended there, it would have been fine. A message of love and support. After leaving my family behind to attend Hope's Peak, it would have given me hope. Given me strength. Since Komaru is there, do you think that I should play uh, Ultra Despair Girls on stream? I don't know. I think my computer might explode, but it might be worth a shot. If this was a normal school, I would have been happy, if a little embarrassed. With my family support to rely on, I would have been motivated to do even better. But here now, it was totally different. I wasn't living an ordinary school life. So I had a pretty strong feeling that the video wasn't going to end there. I hated having that feeling, but it turned out I was absolutely right. This time, I couldn't even make a sound. My voice just died. Where'd everyone go? It looks like a war zone or something. As if in reply, a voice came flooding out of the speakers. I recognized the voice, of course. It was him. Makoto Naegi accepted into Hope Speak Academy and his family who supported such a lucky boy. But it seems like something's happened to this family's well-being. Oh boy, this is bad. What could have possibly happened to this family's well-being? Look for the answer after graduation. What is this? What happened to everyone? I started trembling. I could feel the fear and anger building up inside me like hot magma. God damn it! I slammed my fist against the desk over and over again. A single thought was racing through my mind. What else? How could I think about anything else? I have to get out of here. I have to get out right now. I need to make sure everyone's safe. Makoto? Mm. What happened? Make sure who's safe? I noticed everyone standing around the entrance to the AV room. They stared at me, faces full of confusion. Um... But what's going on? Without a word, I pointed to the cardboard box. Like... Was that what- Is this what Monica Mo was talking about? I saw them. They all gathered around the box, and each of them grabbed the DVD with their name on it. One by one, they each rushed to a monitor. It didn't take long for them to react. What the- What the fuck? 
This can't be real, right? It has to be fake, right? Yeah, no way it's real. No way. I can't take it anymore. Let me out of here. As soon as I saw the reactions, I knew. It all seemed something like what I'd seen. Nobody even bothered trying to hide their fear and confusion. Except for her. Even now, she was totally calm. I see. I see. So this is what he meant by motive. He wants to fuel our desire to leave so that we're more likely to start killing each other. Yes, indeed. It is a classic prisoner's dilemma. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Let me use an example. Imagine two countries are on the brink of war. But both countries want peace and each commits to scaling back their forces as a sign of good faith. But there's a chance that one country may betray the other, so each country fears lowering their guard. The result is that neither scales back their force and they both end up betraying each other. Do you understand? In other words, the fear of invisible treachery becomes the greatest enemy of stability. <laughs> that kind of sounds like us right now. Everyone says we'll work together, but in our hearts we're all afraid someone might betray us. <laughs> Don't put those awful thoughts in our head. That's exactly what they want us to do. Huh? You could say that, but maybe you're thinking that once everyone drops their guard, you can just- What?! Hey. This is exactly what Monokuma, or whoever's behind this, wants. They want us to fight, don't you see? Yeah, you're right. We all need to calm down. Okay then, maybe we should start by all just talking. Maybe if we just talk about what we saw, that'll help get everything out of our system. Besides, I think we're all super curious, right? I wonder what's in everyone's videos. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Hey, Sayaka. What was in your video, Sayaka? What's your problem? What's wrong? Just hurry up and tell us! Sayaka? I gently placed my hand on her shoulder. Stop it! She pushed my hand away and suddenly ran off. Sayaka! That's enough. Let her go. I can't do that. I have to go make sure she's okay. <laughs> I, I hate romantic comedies like this. I don't care what happens to her personally. What? That's because you're totally thoughtless. Um... I, I'm really worried. <sighs> Why don't you go do whatever you think you have to? We don't have to all stick around together, right? I hope you are well. Speaking of which, I have my own things to take care of. Goodbye. Everyone went their separate ways. But I don't have time to worry about them right now. I have to go find Sayaka. Junko, you were the one who said that we should talk. Where are you? Anyway. What should how I you do? doing? Everyone's really upset. I mean, how could anyone be calm right now? Wait, who said that one? Yeah. Why? How could something like that even exist? I just don't understand. I don't. Be able to do something like that? Is it because they really are the murderous feet? Taka. What was in your video, Taka? I thought... Sorry, it's gonna take some time to figure out how to put it into words. Hey, Makoto, these videos are some kind of hoax, right? Right? I wanna think so, but... What the hell, man? This is all one big lie, it has to be! <laughs> What was in your video? Um, before you go some asking someone else, it's only polite that you say what you find yours first, don't you? Don't you think? Well I why are you covering your ears? If I don't have if I don't hear yours, I don't have to say mine. If the art of see no evil, if you're no evil, speak no evil. I don't think that's how it works. Sakura? My family. But I'm not upset by what I saw. If you are, if you're overpowered, you must accept your death. This, that is the way of my family. Damn. But still, I refuse to believe they would lose so easily. How? The cardboard box they were in. Not. Okay. What was in your video, Skeko? Wow. Why should I tell you? Well, that was a grimace. Alright, let's go find Sayaka. Where could she have gone? She can't have gone far. I should check around the school. 
Owie. Um, where's Sayakon off to? Anyway, that video was pretty convincing. I almost thought it was real. I mean, but it's fake, right? It's gotta be. I'd like to believe that, but if it was real. Anyone cowering in here? Nope. Jam. I could just check where she is on the map, Tom, couldn't I? Jinko! I wanted to talk to you. But more important. Hey, Makoto, aren't you, like, super curious what's in everyone's videos? I mean, I can't say I'm not curious. <laughs> right? I could totally tell. But does that mean you're gonna tell me what was in yours? Mm. Hmm, who knows? It all depends on what kind of mood I'm in, you know? I don't think she's gonna tell me. Alright. Mm. So we found Junko. doesn't have the protagonist antenna yet. That is true. Her uniform is also like completely different. Her school uniform, I mean. Kamaru almost looks nothing like uh, how she looked in Trigger Happy Havoc. Except for like, you know, same color hair and eyes basically. But her hair is a lot messier than she has in a whole day. And, uh, Ultra Despair Girls. Did you just go to your room, Psycho? Hi, Celeste. Before that, let's check the dining. There's some magazines lying around. Probably to kill time while you're waiting for your laundry. Washing machine? I know one of these has a coin in it. Yep. We'll check them all just in case it's more than one. It's always nice to have a drink when your laundry gets done. While your laundry gets done. And one more for goodness. Alright, 
Okay, Celeste. Well, it's in yours, Celeste, huh? Oh, it's you do. <laughs> you really want to know, don't you? That smile, strangely scary. Is that okay? There are many, many things in this world you are better off not knowing, don't you think? Sure. Dick much? Rolling blood, must be rock. Come on, B. What was in yours? What? <clears throat> huh? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. It was fake anyway. It had to be. Whoever's doing all this just pulled it out of the ass. Stop yeah, that's gotta be it. Those assholes can't fool me. I like how it just shimmies back. Cute. Alright. Enough dilly dallying. Sayaka, I'm on my way. Are you done having a tantrum? Maybe she's in her room. No answer? Guess I'll have to keep looking. Not in here, huh? Ooh, you're doing an impressive job of hiding from me. Where the heck are you, girly? Uh, it's more accurate to say it's happening concurrently. Well, in some aspects. It really just depends. Especially when it comes, like, regarding information from the anime. And the second game. You know she's not in the gym. I, I, I don't remember the walking around sections too well. Where was Sayaka be? Hmm. Maybe now that I've checked some of the school to show up. I have to go into someone's room without permission. Are you sure about that? Food out when they're finished preparing it. I think one of those kind of places. Give me a clue, laughing son. I haven't played this game in in forever. I don't remember where she's hiding. Where else could she be? Back through. We'll just search the school top to bottom. Can't be there. Oh, there is one place I haven't checked. Not even once. Which way is it again? It's this way. 
Oops, I thought you here. Probably right if you were trying to get out. No, there's Leon. Hey, you seen her around, dude? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, and that's all there is to it. What? Uh, I'm not going to tell you. No way. Hell no. No way in hell. You... You're just acting all nice to me, so I'll tell you what you want to hear. You can't fool me. What the hell? Damn it. How'd they get footage of that? Okay. Have gotten far. Where would I hightail my little butt off to? Classroom? This is the one I woke up in. I found her in one corner of an empty classroom. She was sitting in a chair, hands on her knees, staring absently at the floor. It looked like maybe she was upset or angry or no. She didn't have any expression at all. There was nothing on her face that you could call emotion. It was as if her original mask had been stripped away. Sayaka, are you okay? <gasps> yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Actually, no! How could I possibly be fine? What did I do to end up like this? Why are they doing such horrible, such terrible things to us? I want out! Let me out of here right now! Sayaka, calm down. As she thrashed around, I grabbed her by the shoulders. I understand. I know how you feel right now. When I think of what it might have when I think about what might have happened to my family. But now more than as more than ever we have to stay calm. This is exactly what they want. They want us to lose our composure and stop thinking rationally. Think about it, those videos have to be fake. Because if those things really happened, people out there would be in an uproar. Our families, the police, everyone. Right? So let's just calm down, okay? Otherwise we've already lost. I knew I was trying to convince myself just as much as her. I kept repeating those words to myself to clear away the images that had been burned into my brain. Be calm, okay? Just be calm. As long as we work together, I'm sure we can find some way out of here. And help might even come before that. But what if there isn't a way out? What if help never comes? If that happens, then I'll get you out of here myself, no matter what it takes. When I said that, I paused. I had no idea what had come over me. Fun. Please help me. Her voice was small and shaky. Why? Why is this happening to me? To kill or be killed? I just can't take this anymore. Sayaka. <laughs> <clears throat> Finally, she raised her face up from my chest. She looked at me with those big, wet eyes of hers. Makoto. Can I... Can I believe what you said? Hmm? That you'll help me get out? No matter what it takes? Absolutely. Makoto! Makoto, you're the only one I can trust, so please... No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I need you on my side. Huh? Of course I'll be there for you. No matter what, I'm always on your side. I mean, you are my assistant, after all. Makoto. Thank you, Makoto. 
hearing you say that, I feel like I can keep going. I... I can get through this, as long as you're here with me. Because I'm your assistant. Like you said, I'm your assistant. The smile I'd come to know so well returned to her face. It felt a little forced, but still, it was a huge improvement over how she was before. Hey! Hey! It's standing up! Makoto, it's standing up! What's standing up? Do you even have to ask? Your flat ball. Get the hell out of here! No, no, I want to join in! Damn it, well if you won't leave, then tell us what the hell is up with those videos. Uh, it's about to come out! It's gonna come out! My pristine, pure white! Stuffing! My honest is stuffing is about to come rushing out! I balled up my fist, took aim, and swung as hard as I could. I'd never put so much energy into a single motion before in my life. I leaned back, channeling all my power, and let go of everything I had. Whoa! Uh, are you okay? If I hadn't avoided your punch, you would have just avo uh, violated school regulations. But boy, are you slow, 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 slow! I could have downed a thousand dollar full course dinner in the time it took you to finish your slaying. Your speed, agility, alertness, passion, boldness, sense of despair, antagonization, it's all lacking! <clears throat> wow. Um, what the heck was that just now? He just wanted to mess with us. Uh, um, well, for now, you want to just head back? Yeah. Monokuma had come along and swiftly destroyed the good mood we just created. Sayaka and I headed back to the dorms. You should get some rest, Sayaka. You still look pretty shaken. Sorry. I'm sorry for making you worry about me. You're right, I'm going to go lay down for a bit. With a nod and a small bow, she disappeared into her room. Now on my own, I headed off to tell everyone that Sayaka was okay. Once that was done, I decided to go back to my room. It was hard to think after watching that deranged video. I needed some rest of my own. Jeez. Seriously, what's going on here? There's just so many problems. I can't even decide what the biggest problem is. That we're trapped here? That's what, that what I saw in that video might be real? Monokuma? What the Mastermind has in store for us? Or are we our biggest problem? I want to get out of here. But I can never kill someone. Does the others all feel the same? Yeah, that's definitely the biggest problem right now. Huh? When I opened my eyes, I darted immediately to the clock. It's almost 10 o'clock. I fell asleep without even realizing it. Nighttime's about to start. So how come someone's here? Sorry. I'm really sorry to come by so late. Sayaka? Sayaka, what are you doing out so late? That's when I noticed. Her body was trembling. Is everything okay? It was so strange. Sorry to bother you, but something really weird just happened. <laughs> Something weird? Just a little while ago, I was laying down in my room, and all of a sudden my door started rattling and shaking. Her voice sounded like all the air had been squeezed out of her lungs. Just hearing her talk made me tense up. I was so scared. It was like someone was trying to force the door open. My door was locked, so they couldn't get in, of course. But they started shaking the door harder and faster. I was so scared I couldn't even move. So what happened? For a while, it just stopped. I let some time go by, then I got up and opened the door to check outside. But there was nobody there. Someone tried to force their way into your room? Who would do something like that? I mean... It's not like I'm suspicious of anyone here, but still, it makes me nervous. What if something like that happened in the middle of the night? What would I do then? You don't have to worry about that, right? I mean, you can't go outside during night time. But... That's just a promise we made, right? If someone decided to break that promise, then... Why don't you stay in my room tonight? Would that make you feel better? 
What? All it said in the school regulations was that we had to sleep in the dorm rooms, right? It didn't state specifically which room each person had to sleep in, so... Hey, um... But, but two people sharing one room is... You know... Ah! Oh, jeez, I'm sorry, I didn't even think about that. Honestly, that didn't even cross my mind. Uh, um... Well, I know, me neither. Me neither. Not even that I mind the idea, but... Mm, if you don't mind, can we maybe switch rooms? Just for tonight? Switch rooms? If it'll help put your mind at ease, then it's totally fine with me. But I don't mind you staying in my room, but are you sure you're okay with me staying in yours? It doesn't, like, concern you? <laughs> it's fine. I trust you. In that case, then... <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't miss the best stop by. Oh man, it's already night time. Okay, so it's settled. I'll, he I'll head to your room right now. Oh, if we're gonna trade rooms, we better trade keys, too. <laughs> oh, that's right, we'll have to trade keys. Again? Like I said, I'm psychic. Hmm? Hey, aren't you gonna say you were just kidding? <laughs> what if I wasn't just kidding? Something resembling a smile had made its way to her face. Thank goodness, it looks like she's already starting to get back to normal. Okay, we better trade keys then. Okay. Yep, let's do it. We exchanged keys and I looked back up, up at her again. There's another worried expression there. Um, Makoto, please be careful. If someone comes to the door, don't open it no matter what. I won't. The same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. <laughs> even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Oh, by the way, just so you know, my bathroom door tends to get stuck. It's a little trick to opening it. You have to turn the knob and lift up on the door when you pull it out. Just do that and the door should open no problem. Okay, but the showers don't work during nighttime anyway, right? Oh, that's right, I totally forgot. But I guess I might use it when I get up in the morning, so thank you. Well, what about pissing, Sayaka? You ever get up in the middle of the night to, you know, piss? <laughs> Skin. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, I'd better get going. See you tomorrow, Saika. Hey, um... Oh, and about what I said before. Hmm? <laughs> when I said that I was psychic, it really was a joke. Honestly, I'm just very perceptive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good night, then. See you in the morning. Saika gave me one last parting smile, and I headed off to my room. I looked around as soon as I got out into the hall. Everyone else's doors were closed. There was no sign of life. Good, there's nobody here. Making sure no one was around to spot me, I rushed into Sayaka's room. Good thing it's so close to mine. <laughs> Pink. So this is Sayaka's room. It really doesn't look any different from mine. It smells nice, though. Yeah, except everything's pink instead of white. What's in her trash? Kinda weird to dig through other people's trash, but I couldn't help taking a quick beat. That's... There wasn't any doubt about it. It was the DVD with her name on it that we'd found in the, a in the AV room. That reminds me, I never did get a chance to find out what was in her video. But it's probably best if I wait until she brings it up again. <sighs> if I remember right, all the girls' private bathrooms have locks on them. I'm a little reluctant to go in. My room came with a toolkit, but Sayaka has a sewing kit, just like the note said. And next to it is the map of the body's vital organs. I don't think Sayaka would like me sticking around too much. I should probably go to bed soon. As I lowered myself onto Sayaka's bed, a pleasant fragrance enveloped me. Sayaka's scent. Nike, you pervert. Maybe it'll bring me some sweet dreams.
Feeling a little better than before, I fell asleep. More like, no! <laughs> Imagine you're all on a big spaceship in the middle of an intergalactic adventure. You've heard of Noah's Ark, right? We're sort of like that. We set sail and left Earth behind. Here you don't have to worry about crazy neighbors, corrupt cops, drunk drivers, or pyromaniacs. You don't have to worry about the ozone layer or asthma-inducing air pollution. And of course you don't have to stress about studying for finals or practicing for the big game, but... But even our divine world of freedom has a few rules. After all, freedom can only exist because of rules. If you're really dead set on returning to that tiny piece of dog poop you call Earth, please do your best to follow the rules. I hope I made myself perfectly clear. So then, let everyone do our best to follow these new guidelines and live happily ever after together! Whew. Why do I keep yawning? I'm not tired. Well, I mean, I'm always tired, but you know. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! Man, I've already been streaming for quite a while, huh? I'm not even through the first chapter. Interesting. This is a Christian stream. Yes. We don't talk about dirty things like that. We don't curse. We don't do any of that stuff. This, is, this stream is pretty. This stream is pure. Oh, gosh. I hit the auto button. Um, I sat up, still half asleep, and rubbed my eyes. Slowly, I pulled myself out of bed. I remembered I was in Sayaka's room. Think of water. Alright. It's another beautiful day, everyone. Beautiful day. Come on, camera. There we go. I remembered I was in Sayaka's room. I just remembered. I promised to eat breakfast with everyone else. I better get going. I left Sayaka's room and made my way toward the dining hall. A few people had already gathered at the dining hall by the time I got there. <laughs> Hello, Makoto, and good morning! Can you believe it? I was the very first one here this morning! <laughs> good morning. Hey, Makoto! Morning! I suppose I'm early. I figured everyone who had arrived on time could be considered model high schoolers. And the ones who showed up a little late. Yo. Sorry. Sorry, I'm late. My makeup just would not cooperate this morning. Well, hello. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. My morning uh duty took a little longer than usual. For the types with a more relaxed sense of time, most high schoolers fell into this into this category. And finally, the ones who kept everyone waiting forever. Indeed. I suppose I'm late. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My oh. bad, my bad. I think I just heard something. It'll take a moment to pop up, sorry. Uh, thank you so much for following. Yeah, thank you, Matter Hatter. <laughs> uh, yeah, Matt Hatter. Matt Hatter 1G. Anyway, thank you. Also, it seems my alert box is different than what I'd set it as before, but that's okay. Caught me by surprise there, sorry. My bad, guys. Slept right through my alarm. Your problem. What? Is it so awful to be l late? Yo. 
I didn't oversleep, just so you know. Nope, got lost. I blame the Marita Triangle. Don't care about time or other people in general. They're the kind to move at their own pace. But regardless, everyone had arrived. At least that's how it was supposed to go. Hmm. Wait, aren't we still missing some people? Mm. Yeah, Sayaka and Byakuya aren't here yet. I don't know about Byakuya, but I would definitely put Sayaka in the model high schooler category. For her to be so late... What? What's going on? Did something happen? Yo. Hey man, have you seen Sayaka? <laughs> Why would I have? I just came straight from my room to here. Um, did she forget about our breakfast promise? However... I got the sense she always has her stuff together. Listening to everyone talk like that, a small, dark speck of unease rose up inside me. And that speck started to go quickly. I, I need to go. I have to check on her. The words had barely left my lips before I flew out into the hall. Where I headed first was my room, where I'd let Sayaka stay for a single night. Or she was supposed to be safe. But over the course of that one night, the room had been completely transformed. W what the hell? This is the replica sword I bought for self-defense. It's been taken out of its sheath. More importantly, we're Sayaka. There's a keychain on the ground. It has my name on it, so this must be my room key. I gave it to Sayako when we traded rooms. Can't take the trash. There are slashes and gouges on the walls and the floor. More importantly, we're Sayaka. Yeah, yeah. It's the display fan the sword was the sword was on. More importantly, blah blah Daigi. Simp harder. The toolkit's still inside my drawer and it's still sealed. More importantly, we're safe! <laughs> Bro! <laughs> the bed's been damaged, too. We'll check for her in a second, Maggie. There's slashes and gouges on the walls and the floor. I'd better check the bathroom. Let's take a look in back. It took me a second to realize that I was screaming. What I saw duck its way through my eyes and buried itself in my brain. And then... And then... Everything went black. To survive. Deadly life. When I opened my eyes, I found myself staring at a huge ceiling. It was a ceiling I remembered seeing before. When I sat up, I saw someone looking at me. Again, it was someone I'd seen before. Ah, ah you're awake! Finally, are you okay? Yeah. Now's no time for sleeping, get your ass up! Huh? Uh, um... You were unconscious, dude. I had to carry you back here. Well no surprise, considering what happened. What happened? Um. Hey, are you okay? So it wasn't a dream? What I saw? It was real? <laughs> That's right, it really did happen. Sayaka is dead. A deep, dark despair worked its way through my body and then exploded out of me. I shot up and took off running. Hey, where do you think you're going? I have to see for myself! I have to see if Sayaka is- if Sayaka is- You can check once, twice, a thousand times. Sayaka is completely and irrevocably dead. No, I have to see for myself! Why? Listen to us, man! What do you think's gonna happen if you go out there? But what good is it gonna do if just sitting- what, what good is it gonna do just sitting around here? I mean, why are y'all hanging out in the gym at a time like this? Our friend Sayaka, she's... She's dead! Dead. When I said that, it finally hit me. I realized she really was gone. Calm down. None of us want to be right here right now, either. Then why? Shouldn't it be obvious? Monica, coma. 
She told us all to come here. Well, hold on. Don't talk like that. We all protested it. I remember... I mean, we remember the terrible price tag I had to pay. But... So... I'm the one who convinced them to come. Right now, we need to do whatever he says. We're his prisoners, right? It's not a good idea to defy him without reason. Correct. We don't need to make any more sacrifices than we already have. Why should we listen to anything he has to say? It's obvious he's the one who killed Sayaka. I can never do that. If you can believe anything, you can believe that. <laughs> he's here again. Hey, um... Unless someone violates the school regulation, I absolutely will not interfere. I can promise you I won't do anything that goes against the purpose of your school life here. I'm famous at safari parks throughout the world for following the bear one time- the bear times one rule. But, but... Then, who did it? Who killed her? Come on! You already know the answer! The one who killed her is... One of you! Nobody had a reply for that. One of us? Killed Sayaka? Don't be stupid, that- what? Hmm? What's the matter? You guys all look like you're about to see a dove get shot up with a Gatling gun! <laughs> Don't you remember what I told you when this all began? Yeah. One of you decided to kill Sayaka so you could graduate! Someone's just following the rules. There's nothing wrong with that. Well... You're... You're lying, right? Of course he's lying! I'm telling you, he killed her! Wrong! Nope. Sorry. One of you is now a bona fide killer. If they wanted to, the one who did it could testify to that little fact. What? Without thinking, I looked around at everyone. They all had the same looks on their faces. Everyone looked at each other with a combination of fear, suspicion, and confusion. Uh, um... Are you serious? What? What is this? Someone... Someone killed someone! <laughs> it is amazing what some people are capable of. Just hold on. Hey, hold on! Don't just assume he's telling the truth. Stop talking. That's enough. Before we do anything else, I'd like to confirm something with the stuffed animal here. <laughs> if one of us really did kill her, that person gets to graduate from the school, right? Uh -huh. Come on. Don't play dumb. That's what you said, isn't it? If you kill someone, you get to leave. <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? <laughs> naive. You're just so naive. You think it's really that easy? You can just kill someone and walk on out of here? You're super naive. Devilishly naive. Hellishly naive. No, no, no. The real thing has just begun. The real thing? Now then. Are you ready? Allow me to explain the second part of the rule regarding graduation. Just like I explained before, you must kill someone if you want to leave. However, even if you do that, there's still one more part of the agreement you have to uphold, remember? Then perhaps... You are referring to rule number six of the school regulations. If you are the blackened that commits the murder, you cannot be found out by the other students. That is what you are talking about, is it not? In other words... Bingo! It's not enough to just kill someone, you have to actually get away with it. Which naturally means you need a system in place to assess whether or not it's been gotten away with. Yahoo! So a certain amount of time after a murder has taken place, a class trial will begin! Class... trial? Hmm. Yep, it'll be in a few hours after the murder. Everyone will gather together, including the blackened who committed the murder. And they and the spotless students will all engage in one big debate showdown! During the trial, you'll have to present your argument about who you think the blackened is. my eyes on things. Yes, alert box text is teeny tiny. Yeah, I'll fix it. Just think of Sorry, going back and reading all the stuff now. Can't believe she died. It's so sad. We could have killed her. Not our friend Sayaka, who I love so much. Yeah, let me change it back to the alert box I set up. If I even can, because I don't know why it changed in the first place. She was our assistant. She never would have betrayed us. We were gonna make us through this together. 
Right? I, test I trusted her so much. How could she do this? I definitely was not angry at her for railroading. Therefore, I never would have done this to her. We're gonna make it through this together. Oh, Leo. I should say, um, we're doing a spoiler-free chat, by the way. Before this... But before this great bit goes on any longer. <laughs> this says I do plan to upload this on YouTube. Might as well be beginner friendly, you know? It's so sad though. I definitely enjoyed following Sayaka around for a whole like three hours. Sorry, it's taking me so long to continue on with the game. Just setting things. I don't know why it keeps trying to use that alert box. I don't want to use that alert box. Maybe I'll get violent. Right, I should add the no spoilers tag. I'm just gonna clean out the bathroom. I'll never, I get, I'll never take a shower again. Uh, I'll do that in a second. While I'm handling everything else, I might as well handle that too, right? able to add tags while I'm streaming. God, I haven't done that before. Oops. I can! No. While I'm at it, no back bleeding. Look at that one too. Done. Thank you for the suggestion, Leo. And thank you, all people who have sat through this small intermission. I guess it's time to get back into the game, huh? <clears throat> and once everything comes to an end, the outcome will be decided by popular vote. If the answer you've arrived at is correct, only the one that disturbs your peace will be punished. The rest may continue their communal life. However, if you choose poorly, then the one who got away with murder will survive, and the rest of you will receive your punishment. No one got away with murder will survive, and the rest will receive Which of course means your school life will come to an end. As far as class trial rules go, that's all there is to it. Well, so, um, what exactly is this punishment you keep talking about? Oh, well, to put it simply, it's execution! Yeah. Execution? What? And by execution, you mean... Execution is... Execution! Execution! Electric 
chair. <laughs> Poison gas. <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane. So to make sure I understand, if we get the culprit right, then only they die. But if we get it wrong, all the rest of us get executed? Smart little chimpanzee you are. Look at you, implying you didn't do it without actually saying it. So it's basically what the outside world calls a lay judge system or an inquisition type thing. Which means you'll be deciding who you think the killer is. But just carefully because all your lives are on the line. Okay, let me just add the rule I just described to your handbook. Make sure to keep it in mind. A new rule has been added, added to regulation for me. Wait, hold on a second. You're freaking insane, you know that? Hmm? A class trial? What the hell is that? I don't want anything to do with it. Why not? What do you mean, why not? Why do I have to waste my time trying to figure out who murdered someone? What? Are you saying you're not going to participate in the trial? Only punishment awaits such blasphemy. What? Punishment? I might, I don't know. Throw you in a deep, dark, scary prison or something. Shut the hell up. Say whatever you want. I'm not going to be part of this. Don't, don't be so know. selfish. You're the one being selfish. Kill whoever you want. It's got nothing to do with me. The evil standing before me. I'm trembling with fear. But I won't give in to such evil. It's my style to stick it out and resist till the very end. If you really want to get out of here, you'll have to go through me first. As he said that, he came charging at us, so it was more of a waddle. But then... Are you enjoying yourself now? Are you? Hmm? Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is not allowed! You violated a school regulation! I invoke the mighty summon spell! Help! To me! Unfortunate. <laughs> Suddenly, right at the end, her eyes shot wide open. And just like that, she never moved again. No way! What? What the? I don't. This can't be real. No way! Well, now I am painfully aware of the great power and meaning of a promise. I really wanted to keep a corpse from popping up for no good reason, you know. But I guess you all needed to be taught a lesson after all. Oh, what an amazing promise! But now you guys understand, right? Now you see just how serious I am. Defy me and you get shot full of holes, exploded, buried alive, disintegrated, etc. So, if you don't want that to happen to you, you just obey those school regulations. Junko's body had been impaled with a bunch of spears. An unbelievable amount of blood started pouring out of her body. It was the first time I'd ever seen the moment someone's life came to an end. Nobody there could deny what they'd seen. Junko, who ju until just a second ago had been our friend, was dead. She died. She'd been murdered. In simple terms, it was the death of a human being. Right. Um... It's really not all that shocking. She just died, that's all. Just went and died. It's no more remarkable than the inevitable demise of the entire human race. It's just as natural as the eventual end of the world itself. This isn't some superhero comic, so it's not like when you die, you didn't really die. This is reality! Why? Why did you have to kill her? Didn't you say you would put her in prison or something? Hmm. I changed my mind. Oh. No, you've been wanting to kill this entire time. Hey, what? Kill this entire time? Don't be silly, you can't kill time. Or are you being metaphorical? Are you saying I wanted to waste time this entire time? Not Junko. Come on, what do you take me for? I'm Monokuma! Anyway, none of that matters right now. I 
have something I'd like to give you to help you in your search for the Blackens. This little file has all the information I've gathered about the death in question. I'd like to call it... I mean, naturally, you guys aren't experts at this kind of thing, so you can only do so much with corpse. So instead, I've gathered up everything I know about the circumstances and cause of death. What's that? How do I know the cause of death, you ask? Because the surveillance cameras picked up the whole thing. I got to see it all go down. Hold on. Wait, so then you know who killed Sayaka? <laughs> of course I do! If I didn't, I couldn't possibly pass a fair and accurate judgment during the trial, now could I? That's a good point. The judge has to be able to make the proper decision. That's somehow comforting. Well? Now then, please put your full effort behind your investigation. After all, you don't have any choice but to give it your best shot. Seriously, you don't have a choice? Okay, so we meet up for the class trial in a little while. And with that, Monokuma disappeared once again. He left us stunned and confused. He left us at a total loss. He left us with Junko's dead body growing colder right in front of us. And for who knows how long, nobody said a word. The fact that Sayaka and Junko were dead was a huge shock, of course, but there was more to it than that. It was also the idea that one of us had actually murdered someone. And that if we didn't find out who it, up, who it was, we would all die here. We found ourselves in a situation where we couldn't help but look at each other with open suspicion. It was the worst situation imaginable. And yet, even in such a perversely terrible situation, she didn't show the slightest hint that, had, that it had gotten to her. Now's no time to wallow in your depression. The worst thing we can do right now is lose, faith, is lose all faith in each other. That would lead to the same disastrous result as having total faith in everyone else. What? Huh? In other words... Cooperation is absolutely key at this point. If you decide to trust or not trust is, of course, up to you. <laughs> Continuing to think and talk about the deceased certainly isn't going to help anything. What the heck? Saying stuff like that is just... <sighs> How many times have I told you, anyone who can adapt will die. Death is the only thing awaiting those who are, who are unable or unwilling to adapt. <laughs> If that happens, you only have yourself to blame. That's terrible! What an awful thing to say, especially after what's happened! Just a second. Right now, exposing the killer is the most important thing. Because if we don't, we're all going to die here. <laughs> She's right. We need to begin our search right away. Of course. Either way, we can't run away from the situation, so we have no choice but to move forward. What the heck? We just have to do it, I guess. What other choice do we have? <laughs> No way in hell am I letting someone kill me! Alright, damn it, let's do this! We just have to do it. Everyone kept repeating that sentiment. They were using it like a mantra to give themselves strength. But they're right. We just have to do this. No matter how much we don't want to, we have no choice. If that's what it takes to survive, then that's what we have to do. On top of that, there was something I needed to find out. I had to know why Sayaka had to die. Why she had to be the one. I'm terrified to find out, but still, I have to know. Hey, Nike, Junko's body is also right in front of you. Though. Zip ass. Sadly, you must leave. Alright, I, ho I hope to see you back soon. I'm terrified to find out, but still, I have to know. Otherwise, I knew I'd never be able to accept her death. Which is why I don't have any choice. I have to do this. All right, Kyoko. Hey. Before we start searching for Sayaka's killer, we need to decide what to do about securing the crime scene. What do you mean? Hmm. You're thinking of putting someone on guard duty so no one can disturb the area, aren't you? After all, if the culprit decides to destroy the evidence, we're pretty much screwed. Hey. In that case, I don't mind doing it. I don't like having to think anyway. I'll let you guys figure out who killed that chick. Hmm. Okay, then we can let Mondo look after the scene. <laughs> Well, no, we can't just leave him there alone. What? What? Why the hell not? Stop talking. Isn't it obvious? If you were the culprit, what's the first thing you would do? By volunteering for guard duty, you're in a position to destroy all the evidence you want. <laughs> well, fuck you! Okay. Fine, then I'll stay there on guard duty as well. That way, there's no problem. Mm -hmm. Two-player co-op base defense with the two of them. With their stats, they're totally OP! <laughs> Since you won't be able to help invest us, uh, since you won't be able to help investigate, we're putting our faith in the rest of you. But... Uh, I'm still freaked out, but I'll try. I 
I gently placed my hand on Junko's lifeless body. I touched her wrist to check for a pulse like they do in movies and stuff, but... She really is dead. There wasn't anything else to say, she was gone. I don't know why you even bothered to check. After those injuries and losing that much blood... Frankly, I'd be shocked if she did survive something like that. Huh? Hold on. H hold on! Just, just wait a second! She, she's dead? Then that means... What? That means everything that happened so far is real? Found a joker when it's really real? Let me out of here! Let me out of here! What's your problem? You're just, just now accepting that? And this is why you aren't exactly my favorite. Ray. Let me out of here! I hate this, but we don't have a choice. We have to figure out who did it, or else we're all dead. Kaka? If we find out who did it, then only that person dies. But if we get it wrong, then the rest of us face execution. What the heck? Th that's what this ridiculous school regulation said, right? So stupid. Are you so we're really gonna try and figure out who did it? Yeah, man. I mean, or else we all die. What should I do? Someone got right in front of us there. <laughs> Come on, guys. Just a second. Hold on. Hmm? Before we begin the investigation, isn't there something else we need to discuss? Oh, yeah. Alright, alright, hold on. Fine. She must be so shocked she can't even open her mouth to talk. Anyway. We're going to find out who the killer is. Because if we don't, we're all going to die here. Right. Right, we are. Huh? Is this really happening? Fuck Screw me. that piece of shit bear. Now what, Kyoko? Anyway. Alright, well, you let me. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Sakura. Anything else? We can't run away from the situation, so we have no choice but to move forward. You say that every time, huh? Hey, Tumi? Um, Consciousness has crashed. We started now. Please wait a moment. Hmm. We need to hurry up and figure out who the culprit is. Yeah. Oh. Hmm? <laughs> so you finally noticed. Hmm? Notice what? <laughs> I was looking at the Monokuma file you received, and I noticed something very obvious and very unusual. Huh? huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> Go ahead, take a look. Notice anything interesting about where Sayaka died? She died in Makoto's room. Ah. <laughs> She's right! <laughs> then, could it be? All at once, everyone's gaze turned to me. But hold on a second, you got it all wrong! But for just one night, I... I traded rooms with her. I did it because she was afraid. Y you expect us to believe that? Just tell the truth. The look in everyone's eyes had done a complete 180 from just a few minutes earlier. The feeling of suspicion and fear had returned. In other words, you th you think I did it? Well done. Are we all done talking? We need to begin our investigation soon. At this point, we should split up. We need to get to the bottom of this and find out who killed Sayaka. We'll have to collect clues to form a foundation and construct an argument to come to a final decision. If we get this wrong... So... Well, do I really have to say any more? <laughs> I'd rather you did it. No. Goodbye. Everyone pray for Kaka. With that, Kyoko hurried out of the gym. Goodbye. I'll be going too. And just like Kyoko, he was gone before he realized it. Yo. Oh yeah, I'm on guard duty to... I'm on guard duty, huh? I better hurry to the scene of the crime. Mm. Ah, that's right. Hey, damn it! Let me just say this right now. If whatever son of a bitch did this is here right now and they're thinking of destroying that evidence, they better not let me find them. I'll skip the trial and cave their goddamn skull in myself. I'm serious. Ugh. I'm serious. I will fuck them up. I bit my tongue. Letting his deadly words hang in the air, he and Sakura ran off. Oh, um, but, I mean, we're not detectives or anything, you know? And we're gonna investigate a murder? How do we even do something like that? Anyway... We don't really have any have to do anything in particular. We already know who killed Sayaka. 
What are you implying? It was you. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. Th don't come any closer. Are you gonna kill me next? Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. It's not for sure that Makoto's guilty yet. Um, that's true. We might as well check just to be sure. Even if I w wanted to, I couldn't help investigate. Aww. Wait, why not? I'm not g good with b b blood. All it takes is one glimpse and I b black out. Oh yeah. Well, whatever. I don't think anyone was expecting much from you anyway. All right, I guess I better get going. Wait, don't go yet. You have to hear me out. But it was pointless. Everyone had already left. And the parting looks at me had still been filled with suspicion. Does everyone really think I'm the killer? How did it turn out like this? Seriously, they got it all wrong. Why do they have to suspect me? I have to do something. Otherwise, everyone will... Execution is... Execution. Execution! I can't let that happen. I can't let things turn out the way Monokuma wants. All I have to do is find out who really did it. Who really killed Sayaka. Alright. I guess I should look through the Monokuma file we got before. The victim was Sayaka Maizono. The time of death was estimated to be around 1.30 a.m. The body was discovered in Makoto's room in the dormitory. All evidence suggests that the death took place in the bathroom. The cause of death was a stab wound to the abdomen. There was also an injury to her right wrist. Specifically, the wrist appears to have suffered a fracture. He had no choice but to push forward if he wanted to find out what happened. Somehow, I'll have to find out the truth. So that we can all survive. And for Sayaka, I have to find out how she was killed. Alright. Testimonies. Aren't you gonna help investigate, Shiro? Um, but I can't just leave Junko here. I, I feel sorry for her. I I have to stay with her. That's kind. Uh, uh, no way. I seriously don't want to die here. I'm begging you, God, Buddha, Mother, Earth, God of Space, King Neptune, hear me. I don't care who it is. Just get me out of here. Hero doesn't seem to re doesn't seem prepared to do any kind of investigating right now. Yeah. Alright. I'm outie. First of all, I should head to the scene of the crime, my room. We won't make any progress without investigating there. So I headed to my room, where Sayaka's corpse still remained. I'd better examine the state of my room a little closer. That might reveal something new. <laughs> Look at Junko hiding behind Mondo like that. Alright. This is the replica sword I brought back to self-defense. Does this mean it was used in the attack somehow? And plus, it's been taken out of its sheath. I hadn't actually looked at the blade itself till now. I shouldn't be surprised it's coated in gold too. On top of that, some of the gold coating has come off parts of the blade and handle. Yeah, the handle especially is missing a lot of coating. I remember the code in 60, even if you just touched it a little bit. It's been added to the truth bullet section. Hmm, looking at the lint roller, it looks like there's way less than there was before. Did Sayaka see how dirty my room was and decide to clean up a little? This is the rest of the sword, blah blah, using the attack. Plus the sword's been taken out, so it's just a sheath, but... Hmm? There's some scratches on the sheath. They must have been made with something sharp. Wait. But how did the sheath get scratched up in the first place? Even if someone used a sword during the struggle, it doesn't make sense for the sheath to be damaged. I mean, if you're going to attack someone with a sword, the first thing you do is unsheath it. A heavy sheath like this would only get in the way. It could just slide off in the middle of the fight. So why are there scratches on the sheath? It's the display stand the sword was on. There's a key on the ground. It has my name on it, so it's my room key. If I remember correctly. Oh, that's right. We'll have to trade keys. When we switched rooms, we switched keys, too. So Sayaka would have had the key here in my room the entire time. But wait, if that's true, then... How did the killer get into the room in the first place? Did Sayaka have forgotten to lock the door? No, that seems impossible. 
same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? After saying that, there's no way she would have forgotten the locket or opened it for any reason. Well, maybe she dropped the key somewhere and someone else grabbed it or something. No, that's not possible either. Saika was in here when we switched rooms. And with how scared she was, she wouldn't have gone walking around, so she couldn't have dropped it. So how did the killer... It's been added. Oof, my bad. There are gadgets in the bed like someone attacked it. What the hell happened here? Toolkit's still inside the drawer. I don't see any evidence that it's been used at all. Which makes sense, I guess. I mean, it's mine and I haven't had any reason to open it. I can't even imagine a situation where I'd need a toolkit like this. Yo. Yeah, seriously. Oh, Mondo. Why? We ain't exactly in the mood Why? to be building fucking furniture, right? So you haven't used your Adidas then? Why? No, just me. Why? Not just me. Nobody's busted theirs out yet, as far as I know. Actually, we were talking about it yesterday. By the way. None of the guys have opened their toolkits yet, because, like, why the hell would we? It's been added to the truth bullet section. Alright. Uh, so Sakura, let's see what you have to say first. Sakura, do you think I'm guilty too? Hey. I try not to make assumptions like that. I simply don't know whether or not you did this. <clears throat> Whatever decision the rest of you come up with, I will follow your lead. I see. By the way. You know, I realized something while I was on guard duty. The killer could have already destroyed some evidence, right? Before anyone found the body, I mean. The trash room here in the dorms, right? They could have tossed some stuff in there. Th yeah, that's definitely possible. You son of a bitch. That dirty bastard! Anyone who raises their hand to a woman is scum that deserves death. That's what my brother taught me. You're fucking dead. So if I ever find the son of a bitch that did this, I'm gonna pound his goddamn face in. But, but what if it was a girl that did it? Yo. That'll all get sorted out when the time comes. We'll see. Hey, Kyoko. I quietly called her name while she was investigating the area. But... What are you doing? Isn't it obvious? N no. Not really. I'm searching. Searching? She was down on her knees, carefully inspecting every inch of Did my room. Did you lose a contact or something? I don't know what she's doing exactly, but she seems to be concentrating pretty hard on it. But a few seconds later, she suddenly stood up straight and said, Are you a clean freak? Hmm? No, I don't think so, but what? Nodding, she glanced around my room one more time. Interesting. What's interesting? Just as I suspected, there's something very unusual about your room. Unusual? What do you mean? So... I searched your room from one corner to another. And I didn't find one single strand of hair. Really? Indeed. Not one hair from the victim, and not one hair from you, even though you've been living in here. You know, now that you mentioned it, I noticed something I was looking around before. It looked like the lint roller in my room has been used, but I never touched it. Could someone have used it too? I see. Oh, could someone have used it too? Very interesting. Your room didn't have a single hair in it, and someone used your lint roller without your knowledge. In other words, someone other than you came in and scrubbed your room clean. Was it Saika? Or the killer? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Makoto's room cleanliness has been added to the truth bullet section. Alright, murder scene. I should look around here first? Okay. Yeah, let's see. Oops. Okay, got it. There are scrappies and gadgets on my wall from bed. Is that evidence of a struggle? Looks like there must have been some kind of fight in my room. Damn it! I was right there in the other room. If only I heard something. That would not have been possible. Hmm? Huh. Don't you remember? All of our rooms are completely soundproof. So something could happen in the room right next to you, and there's no way you could know. What? Perhaps this is another one of Monokuma's strategies, creating an ideal setting for murder. Evidence of a struggle has been added. Nothing in my trash can. We'll look at the floors too. Scratches and gouges. Mm. Alright. Bathroom. And on the other side of the store. No. I can't let it get to me. I can't afford to freeze up now. Forcing myself to push my panic down, I stepped into the bathroom. Looking at her made it painfully clear it wasn't a dream or an illusion. She had lost everything that made her her. Sayaka. 
All at once, I was overcome with dizziness, nausea, the urge to burst into tears. But I can't... I can't hesitate now. Why? Why does Sayaka have to die? I have to uncover the truth. I have to find out what happened. I wanted to give up. I wanted to collapse. But that thought held me up and supported me. Alrighty. Just a small space. So about your wrist. I told myself I simply couldn't face what I saw, but but now's not but now's no time to think like that. Oh my goodness! But now's no time to think like that. I pulled out the Monokuma file to verify what it said about her body. Some sort of some sort of sharp object had been thrust into her stomach. That must have been the killing blow. But whatever they used to kill her, where'd they get it? That's definitely something I should look into later. Also, according to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's right wrist is broken. Her wrist does look swollen and bloody, that's for sure. But there's something sort of glittery there on her wrist too. Right there, where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery. That definitely concerns me. Another thing that concerns me is... Hmm, there's some blood on her left index finger, but that's it. The palms of both her head, of both her hands are totally spotless, so how come only her left finger... Her wrist has been added to the juice bullet section. The stab wound in her stomach is what killed her, so when she broke her wrist... That must have happened earlier on. I mean, how would her wrist get broken after she'd already been killed? So it's very possible she broke her wrist during the struggle. The killer attacked Sayaka in the main room, which is when her wrist got broken. After that, the killer cornered her in the bathroom, where they inflicted the deadly wound. I looked past Sayaka to the wall behind her, and there I saw. Look. Written in blood were the numbers 11037. Did Sayaka do this? I can't imagine who else would. Some sort of sharp object has been thrust into her stomach. That must have been the killing blow. But whatever they used to kill her. Oh, kill her, her. Very nice. Where'd they get it? That's definitely something I should look into. Also, according to the monochrome, blah, blah, blah. Wrist broken. Oh, with all that said, tab. Alright, that's all that there is to check. Need the bathroom? Yep. Only one place to get a knife, so you should probably take the dining hall. Looks like you found it, right, Makoto? Bloody numbers. That's most likely Sayaka's dying message. I've never seen something written in blood before. It really was her final message. It's as if she wrote it with life itself. Right. Do you often talk like an aspiring poet? But the numbers she wrote, what do they mean? 11037. I have no idea what that could possibly mean. So... The way she wrote the numbers makes me think she wanted to use her body to block them. If she wrote them in that location while she was sitting where we found her, it means she must have wrote them by turning only her hand toward the wall. If you were to write something in that position, do you know what the result would be? The result? Well, think about it. You're not going to tell me? Makoto. You need to uncover the mystery of this case yourself. Otherwise, the case will end and you'll remain unconvinced. I have no idea what you're trying to say, but it's obvious you're not going to tell me. Dying message has been added to the truth bullet. Looks like Kyoko knows what Sayaka's dying message means. But honestly, I have no idea. Oh, I know who I should talk to. When it comes to numbers, who better to ask than the ultimate programmer? Makoto. There's one other thing I wanted to ask you about. Do you know how the door to your bathroom got broken? Broken? Oh, you mean how it gets stuck? What? Gets stuck? Yeah, I guess I'm the only one, but the door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. When I first tried to use it, I thought it was just locked. But once you learn the trick, it opens no problem. Bathroom door frame has been added. Correct. So the door doesn't quite fit the frame, huh? But actually, I'm referring to the broken doorknob. Hmm? The doorknob? Oh, that's right. You didn't notice? Well, just try closing the door the bathroom door. I'm sure you'll see right away what I'm talking about. I did what Kyoko said and shut the bathroom door. Hmm? The doorknob. What the heck? The doorknob's practically about to fall off. Why is it like this? Someone must have used a screwdriver or something similar to unscrew it. Whatever it was, it was obvious this was intentional. What? It was intentional? Why would someone want to do that? So... I guess maybe they were trying to get the door unlocked and ended up breaking the whole thing. But my bathroom doesn't have a lock on it. Only the girls' bathroom can lock, right? She stood there for a while, lost in thought. And apparently struck with a sudden realization, she shot a question at me. Just a second. I have just one more question for you. You mentioned earlier that your bathroom door would get stuck, right? Did you tell anyone about that? 
Um, well, I did tell Sayaka about it last night when I switched rooms. So what you're saying is only you and Sayaka knew about mm -hmm. it. Hmm, interesting. She had the slightest hint of a smirk on her face. I can sense she was really starting to get into all this. I see. And that clears that up. Hmm? Clears what up? I'm so lost. Goodbye. Well, see you later. As if forgetting I was even there, she suddenly turned and left the room. Bathroom doorknob has been added. I still don't really understand any of this, but... I've already given my room a good once-over. Maybe I should look around somewhere else. I should start looking into where the murder weapon might have come from, and also... I should look into the DVD Sayaka got. With Sayaka dead, I have no choice but to see for myself what was in that video. And on top of that, I'm sure there are some other areas worth checking out too. Maybe I should see what everyone else thinks, if they'll even talk to me, that is. Oh, I'll talk to you guys one more time. By the way. Alright, making sure. You guys don't have anything you to say, probably. But I'll skip you dialogue in this case. Let's get out of here. I still don't understand any of this. An accurate representation of me at any point in time. Yep. Also, hi, Musical Wolfie. But yeah, mood. Mood, Leo. Alright, let's get that DVD from her trash can. Hmm, this is definitely my room, but the nameplate has Sayaka's name on it. Odd. Hmm, this is Sayaka's room, right? But the nameplate has my name on it. The nameplates on my room and Sayaka's rooms were... which? So all that effort I put into switching rooms without anyone knowing was totally pointless. But why would anyone do that? The dorm nameplate has been added. Alright, trash can. There can only be one thing in the trash can. Yep, the DVD with Sayaka's name on it. She got really upset after seeing whatever was in that video. I wonder, what did she see? Might not be directly related to the case, but it might be worth checking out anyway. Sorry, Saika, I need to borrow this TV. All I need here. Next. Hello. Talk to me. Something doesn't seem right. The Monokuma file said Saika was killed in your room. I just can't stop thinking about it. Could it be... The nameplate? Mm-hmm. hmm <laughs> Very strange. Mr. Nike, what was Miss Maizono doing in your room? Let me just say this. I absolutely will not allow you to dispose of any evidence in the trash room. Do you really think I'm guilty? Well, I mean, I can run faster than you, I'm sure. What's in the trash room? There's a hat on the floor, but it won't budge. Looks like some kind of switch. I wonder what it does. Sturdy gate here. No way to get past. It's the end of the line! The trash room. This is where all the trash from the school eventually winds up. How do you get this gate open? No, no, you can't go any further! No, no, no! No entry beyond this point! Only the person on cleaning duty is allowed in! Cleaning duty? No, no, you can't go any further! Hmm, who's on cleaning no, duty? No, no, you can't go any further! This is stupid. It'd be faster to just go around and ask no, the others. No, no, you can't go any further! Cleaning duty? Alright guys, who's on cleaning duty? Fess up! Um, I'm looking for whoever's on cleaning duty. Hmm. Cleaning duty? As a matter of fact, that's me. Why do you ask? Just so happens Wanakuma talked to me yesterday and asked me to take care of it. Without someone on cleaning duty, the school would be flooded with trash in no time. Well, I formally applied for the position. Hmm. I was gonna start this morning, but after what happened, I haven't had a chance to get started. Since you're on cleaning duty, you can open the gate in front of the trash room. Here we go. Of course! It's my job to gather up all the garbage and toss it in the trash room. And to do that, they gave me the key for the trash room gate. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to rotate once a week, so eventually you'll be in charge. Very strange. Wait, hold on. You need a key to get in the trash room, and only the person on cleaning duty has access to the key? 
What's the point of going to all that trouble? Why not just leave the trash room open all the time so we can go to out whenever we want? That does seem more convenient. So in other words... Actually... Become the black and we'll graduate unless they're discovered. So that's it. That must be why. If anyone could go in and out of the trash room whenever they wanted, then destroying evidence would be easy. The thrill would disappear and things would become boring. It's boring? Hey, listen! Anyway, more important than that. Hey, hey, fatty, why do you want the cleaning duty gig anyway? Why do you have to be so rude? Oh, um... I just decided to volunteer for something I knew no one else would want to do. What's the big deal? You... Liar, I know why you did Is it. Like... You want to dig through all the girls' trash, looking for, you know, and poking around at it. No way what are you talking about? about? All my love is for 2D. 3D PD for life. You know what I mean. But there's all kinds of trash diggers like that. Maybe you'll get tired of 2D and then turn to... I would never get tired of 2D! After spending a significant amount of time comparing 2D to 3D, I voluntarily chose 3D. At uh, 2D. The only thing 3D is good for is to shower love and affection on 2D. Oh, and PVC figures. Give me a break. How are you to How are you not totally embarrassed to say stuff like that? Hmm. If you're so worried about Hifumi's questionable morality, that's an easy solution. Uh, there's a very easy solution. Whenever a guy has cleaning duty, Sakura can accompany them from picking up the trash and disposing of it. Hey! What? What? If you're as innocent as you claim, where's the harm in it? <laughs> that's not how it's supposed to- Anyway, on, an on another topic, Hifumi, since you're on cleaning duty, I have a favor to ask you. Mm -hmm. What, so you, now you suddenly want to join my party? Sorry, but you haven't triggered that flag yet. I mean, you haven't helped me recover from a past trauma, or save a village, or beat a boss. No, nothing like that. I was just hoping to get into the trash room and look around. Yeah. Oh, okay! So easy. So Hifumi and I headed down to the trash room. Hmm. You'd like me to open the gate, wouldn't you? <laughs> You know, when I look at it, it makes me think. They said he killed his wife. He learned to get by on the inside, but he never stopped dreaming. Get busy living or get busy dying, he said. So him and Rita, they found themselves a way out. Whatever, please just hurry up. <laughs> Okie dokie, leave it to me. He threw me pulled the key out of his pocket and used it to flip the switch next to the gate. And then... <clears throat> However, Mr. Naivy... Surely you aren't planning to use the trash room to destroy evidence, are you? Y you fiend! You planned this all along! N no I just wanted to see if the actual killer tried to destroy any evidence or not. Mm. But the actual killer is you, isn't it? You wanted to see if you left anything behind. Wait, maybe a parallel world? Whatever, let's just hurry up and keep looking. <clears throat> there are shards of broken glass scattered around the front of the incinerator. Looks like it used to be some kind of glass ball, just about big enough to fit in the palm of your hand. Yeah, that's that! Do you know what this is? Mm -hmm. They say if you collect all seven, a dragon will appear and grant you a single wish. <laughs> hmm. hmm, kidding aside, it's the kind of thing you might see on any big city street corner. Gaze into it and it'll show you a glimpse of the future. Just like that Mina girl who was on a quest to find that one guy. Yeah, I get what you're trying to say, but who did this particular ball belong to? There's only one person it could be. It should all still be in the gym. I'd better go find that out for sure. Shattered Crystal Ball. This is the incinerator. It's way in the back part of the trash room. It's a good 30 feet from here to the gate. And it's on right now! Mm -hmm. You see the green and yellow buttons next to the mouth of the incinerator? Yes, indeed. It's a pretty simple setup. You press the green button to get it going and the yellow button to turn it off. Sooner or later, you'll be on cleaning duty, so make sure you learn this before you leave, okay? Hmm? Someone turn the incinerator on! Very strange. I was quite certain it was off last time I was down here. Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. You fool me, do you realize what you just said? Huh? The fairy? No, you just said the last time you were here, the incinerator was off. <laughs> Ah, yes, about that, there can be no mistake. If I got one thing going for me, it's my memory. I feel as if... Yesterday, as soon as I was appointed, I came down to check the place out. It definitely wasn't on then. I haven't been back to the trash room since then. So if I'm the only one who has a key to open the gate, it'd be impossible for the incinerator to be on. And yet... 
So that means someone was able to switch on the incinerator without opening the gate. But how is that possible? Incinerator has been added. There's something on the ground in front of the incinerator. Looks like a burnt piece of something. Mm. A burnt piece? Like a hunk? Like a hunk of burning love? Anyway, this is. Looks like a piece of cloth and the shape. Part of the sleeve from a button up shirt. Now that I look at it, that's definitely blood on the cuff, which means that's all that's left is some of the evidence the killer destroyed. But there are a lot of people here with white button up shirt. But it isn't enough by itself to figure out who the killer is. Alright, the shirt piece has been added to the bullet section. Hmm. This whole thing is quite strange indeed. When I was here last, the incinerator was off and those glass shards and burnt clothes weren't. <laughs> what does it all mean, Mr. Nagy? Will you be confessing soon? Why me? Everyone already knows you did it. All the mysteries are being solved one by one. Sounds like he's living out one of his comic book fantasies. The green button turns it on, and the yellow button turns it off. Or so it seems, anyway. Anything else? Talk to you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nike, you seem a little down. Hmm, really? <laughs> you need help lifting your spirits? Call on me anytime. Uh, I've got all kinds uh, of smut or stuff that might help cheer you up. <laughs> Alright. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Man, it's already three. I don't want to call it in the middle of the investigation, though. My voice is getting raspy. So I'll try to finish the investigation, and then we'll have to just pick it up next week, I guess. Uh, there is one thing I did not account for. My poor, poor voice. Hey, talk to me. Very strange. So, why was Sayaka in your room when she was killed? Could it be because you are the culprit? But no, you got it all wrong. Sayaka and I touched rooms last night. He didn't even try to hide the suspicion on his face. Hmm. Even if what you say is the absolute truth, you're still responsible for her death, wouldn't you say? Hmm? Hmm. After all, she wouldn't have died if she hadn't switched rooms with you, right? The reason Sayako was killed is because I suggested we switch rooms? She's dead because of me? And it should have been me that died? <laughs> well, all that we can say right now is that it's a possibility. But that... If that's really true, then I... Dang. Really makes me think. Anyway, I'm hungry. Let's go to the dining hall. Hi, Asahina. What have you been doing? Hina, are you investigating the dining hall? Mm. Oh, no, I'm just taking a break. Actually, I've been taking a break since we started. This is all a first for me, you know? I don't have the first clue what I should be doing. I know what you mean. <laughs> I don't know why, but being in the dining hall helps, me keep, helps keep me calm. So I know I shouldn't, but I've just been kind of hanging around here. To tell the truth, I was doing the same thing last night when Sayako was killed. Interesting. Anyone to cooperate? Wait, but she was killed at 1.30 a.m. Austin, you weren't in your room? There's a bunch of vegetables. Nothing noteworthy. That's noteworthy, though. There are all kinds of kitchen knives here, big to small, but looks like one of them is missing. Was it missing from the very beginning, or...? I'm trying to see if anyone here knows more about it. The kitchen knife that has been added. Honestly, Nike, I feel like with a little imagination, these clues are all you needed. Hey, so did you know that one of the kitchen knives was missing from the dining hall? Yeah, totally! Yeah, weird, huh? I thought it was kind of strange, and I was just suddenly disappearing like that. Oh, so it wasn't missing from the beginning? Right. Nope, last I remember they were all lined up in a nice neat row. So when did you notice one of them had disappeared? 
Well, I went to get some tea from the kitchen last night and all the knives were still there. But when I finished my tea and went back to the kitchen to wash my glass, one of the knives was gone. So you're saying the knife disappeared while you were drinking your tea in the dining hall? Yeah. In other words, you were right there in the dining hall when someone came and took it. And you should be able to say for sure. You can tell everyone I didn't call come into the dining hall last night. Which proves I didn't take it. Her account has been added. Um... Hey, by the way, did you really kill Sayaka? What? Of course not! I would never! Hina, do you really think I murdered her? I mean... Well, she was killed in your room, right? So, I mean... You guys were supposed to be friends, right? But you still... killed her. On the other hand, two people becoming good friends and one killing the other is a classic drama setup. So when you consider everything together, I honestly have no idea. Oh, me too, girl. Alright, um, Hagakure should still be in the gym. We need to ask him about the crystal ball, because there's no one else I could really belong to. feels messed up. Give me a sec. <clears throat> come on, come on, camera. There we go. Back to life. What were they doing? Oh yeah, I was going to the gym. Oh, let's review our clues before we change location, though. Alright, victim was Sayaka. Time of death was 1.30 a.m. Body was discovered in Makoto's room at the dormitory. Took place in the bathroom. Cause of death was a stab wound to her abdomen and her right wrist appears to have been fractured. Number of scratches and gouges on the bed and walls in Makoto's room, so there was evidence of a struggle. A replica sword. He took it from the gym entryway and put it in his room. It was found in its shield, out of its sheath in the floor in the middle of the room. The floor handle was missing some of the gold coating as well as Sprite's blade. The sheath. Lakota took this from the gym and it was found some distance from the sword itself with evidence of being scratched with a sharp object. On the night of the murder, Makota and Sayaka traded rooms. Please, evidence for the Um, Sayaka had originally asked Makota to switch and someone attempted to force her into her room and she became frightened. Okay. This has been placed in Makoto's room before he arrived. It remains unopened and there's no evidence of it being used. All the other male students claim that they haven't used theirs either, but still, the broken door handle is differently. Not a single handle was found on the floor at the scene of the crime. In addition, the wind roller shows evidence of being used. Uh, Sayaka's wrist. Her right wrist was fractured and it was glittery at the injury's location. In addition, her hand appears to be completely clean except for the index finger of her left hand, which has some blood on it. Dying message. A series of numbers had been written in blood on Makoto's bathroom wall, 11037. It is assumed that Sayaka wrote these numbers while leaned up against the wall as she lay dying. Bathroom door frame. Makoto's bathroom door was difficult to open due to it not quite fitting the door frame properly. The only two people who knew the trick to opening it were Makoto and Sayaka. Bathroom door knob. His door knob had been broken, screws holding it in place had been partially or completely removed. Door na uh, name planes. Apparently they were switched. A nice set. Uh, one of the knives had gone missing last night. According to Allie, it had to have gone missing when she was in the dining hall at night. Allie swears that Makoto did not come to the dining hall at any point while she was there. Trash duty. Apparently, there's a trash bag. There's a trash room within the school. It's blocked off by a sturdy gate and it can only be opened with the trash room key. The incinerator. It can be activated via switch on the machine. Takumi was on cleaning duty and he cleaned the last time he saw the incinerator was off. However, when Makoto checked it after the incident, it was definitely on. Distance from the gate to the incinerator is roughly 30 feet. Burnt shirt piece. A piece of burnt clothing was found next to the incinerator in the trash room. It has a blood stain on it and it's part of a shirt cuff. And a shattered crystal ball. Shards of glass were found next to the incinerator in the trash room. As it turns out, the glass ball would have fit comfortably in the palm of a person's hand. Alright, those are all of our clues up to now. Let us head. Kuda Gym. 
You know what? <clears throat> Instead, let us talk to, our pe to people on the way. We'll, we won't fast travel it. Or I guess I kind of did, but I'll just go back. Boop, 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 boop. Alright, starting here. Where is everyone? Kiyotaka! Listen to me. Do you have a second, Makoto? I've uncovered something most unusual. The door to everyone's room has a norm has a nameplate on it to show whose room it is, right? You hear me? Well, it just so happens. Wait, no, no, no! You might be the killer yourself. I can't tell you anything. Forget everything I just said. Forget, 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 beam! <laughs> Sorry, just a little joke. Even I joke sometimes. Ha ha ha. Ah. Forget beam. <laughs> oh yeah, A B room. Yeah, for uh, for motives. I should be able to use this to see what's on the DVD. The DVD that Sai kept in the garbage. I sat down in front of the screen and put the DVD in the player. I pushed play and the screen was dark for a few seconds, but then... An image slowly appeared. Looked like some kind of concert. It's standing on stage, front and center, with a face I recognized all too well. Sayaka. She was there, along with the friends who had been so important to her. She was positively glowing there in front of the crowd, so full of light. Seeing that image made it harder, even harder to accept. Except that she was... dead. My vision started to blur and darken, and then that voice I'd come to despise so much began to float out of the speaker. Sayaka Maizono, the ultimate top sensation, lead singer for a world-famous all-girl pop band. For these girls, the glowing spotlight only made them that much more beautiful. But then... Then... Suddenly, the screen went dark, and in the next moment, I saw something I could hardly believe. What the? Saika had disappeared from the stage, which was now in ruins. But what I noticed even more than that was the figures of the other girls who had all simply collapsed. This ultra-successful team suddenly fell apart! None of them will ever perform on stage again. None of them will ever feel the warmth of the spotlight. For Sayaka, there's simply nowhere for her to return to. So here's the billion dollar question. What oh what could have caused the group to go to pieces? Without warning, the video cut off. <clears throat> what the hell? That wasn't real, right? They're a super famous pop group. Everyone knows who they are. Is he trying to say he was even able to get to them? If that really did happen, everyone on in the inside uh, everyone in the outside world must be going crazy. What kind of person would take things this far? I don't know, Nike, what kind of person would take things this far? Well we're thinking about that. Talk to a friend of ours in the main hall. So, uh, did you have any clues or anything? What kind of clues? Let us just agree we do not know who the culprit is and leave it at that. Whatever secrets I may have, I don't intend on revealing anything until the class trial. Okay, then, do you have any suggestions for where I should start looking? Ugh, no. oh, so annoying. Must you fumble around fishing blindly for clues? <laughs> Hmm, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to give you a little hint. The scene of the crime, naturally, but I think the trash room is also worth looking into. The trash room? <laughs> it is the perfect place to destroy evidence. However, there is one little problem, which is... As for me... That place is filthy. I would rather die than set foot in there. <laughs> I'm trusting all of you to conduct a thorough investigation on my behalf. But that... Well, I already did it, so yeah. thanks. I'll go back after talking to my other in the gym. Maybe there's something new. I don't think there is a higher number correctly. Oh, yeah. 
Hey, dude. Hey, hero, can I ask you something? Uh, no, no, no. Gotta get out of bed. Hero, snap out of it. Um. Uh, Makoto, what are you doing here? What? Hey, uh, this is, does this look familiar? Ugh. That's my crystal ball! But it's all smashed, what the hell? What the heck? I only bought it because the guy said it was blessed. He said it was unbreakable. So, how to break? What? Was it actually just made of glass and not crystal? Did that guy totally dupe me? <sighs> he said it belonged to the pillars of history. Genghis Khan, George Washington, Napoleon. He said whoever controlled that crystal ball controlled the world. Was that seriously all BS? Um, let's put that aside for now. So can you say without a doubt that this belonged to you? Um. Yeah, that's mine for sure. I probably forgot about it in the laundry room last night. Someone must have come by and snatched it. You left it in the laundry room? That means anyone could have found it and taken it. Thanks, Hero. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, um. Sure. Um, by the way, I'm almost afraid to ask, but how much did you pay for that thing? Uh. Everything I saved up from fortune telling for two full years came out to be like... A million. A m million? Um, yeah, that's pretty cheap, actually. I mean, considering it gives you the power to control the world. That's just too... too stupid. I can't even feel bad for him. Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. What say we just get started, hmm? Excuse me? It's time for the long-awaited... Class Trial! Now then, allow me to appoint a proper location for the proceedings. Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon! Unfortunately, Stream, we will not be going through that door just yet. The red door on the first floor. That's where I should go. No, where I have to go. And this foreboding scenery is what we will leave off on. Uh, I thank you all for joining me as we play Danganronpa for several hours. But my voice is starting to die. I am surprised I managed to get so far uh, in one stream, but I have a feeling this will end up becoming more of a series than a single stream deal. Still, though, uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, you can follow me at the, at the, uh, Twitter posted on the screen. The Planetaria is where you can get news on whether I or my other, uh, or my other ship members are, well, my ship crew, are streaming. We, there's something going on pretty much all week, I'd say. Um, other than that, you can follow me at my art channel, Mewdroid. Not art, but art channel. Um, you can follow me at my art account. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, it is 18 plus. And below there's also a red bubble link where you can buy all kinds of merch that we have during the Nice Buck Club. And we have a YouTube channel where I archive things like this. I'm also playing Omori, and I played a bunch of Our Life, which is another visual novel, although it's more of a romantic type. Um, all my other friends uh, archive things there as well, so you're never in want of content. We have tons of old videos on there, and new ones are being uploaded all the time. With all that said, and without further ado, <laughs> thanks for joining us on this on this trip. Uh, thank you, Musical Wolfie, for following as well. Have a great day, and safe space travel.